we, it is so disheartening that people don't just rob people face to face anymore. Like, right. listen, the On internet's the ruined everything. Yeah, yeah. just bring stab back me in person. In yeah. <laughs> Millennials have ruined the robbing industry. <laughs> they have. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Hannah Hillam. And I'm Kava Taharian. And today we are joined by a very special guest. This has been, dear Lord, almost years in the making. It's a, <laughs> it's a crossover of the Kava cinematic universe. <laughs> today we have GI doctor and host of the House of Pod, which is a humor adjacent medical podcast and a fellow blacksmith, much like myself. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Kava Hoda at long last. It's like I'm having an out of body experience right now. <laughs> I'm I'm looking at a guy named Kave who looks not dissimilar to me. I know, we're kind of similar look, looking. You have like a beard. That's the one thing that I can't have a beard because of my job. I have to wear like surgical masks and oh. that sort of thing. Otherwise mm, I would right. absolutely have a beard too. And uh it's it's I'm it's bizarre. It's bizarre. <laughs> Getting emails from Kave to Kave <laughs> is weird. Being like, Kave, are you ready to do this thing? I'm like, sure, Kave. Am I talking yeah. to myself? It's so fucking weird. I'm having I, a weird time. Is there's, it weird it, for you? It, yeah. Because I've only have... ever met one Kave and it's, well, now I've this met one. two. And oh, the one guy I read you... about in the news, the one that, like, there was like a murderer named Kave or something. You met, there was? You met our, yeah. our, our other friend, Kave Rostigar. Oh, Rosti. the, the you guitarist met or something. It's bassist, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. We saw Rusty Five outside of uh, Book of Mormon because he was playing bass on that show. And I had watched it for musical explaining. That's right, Actually, the last podcast. Kave Rastagar and mm-hmm. uh, Kave, your Kave, and me, uh-huh. I've been trying to get us together for a podcast just yeah. called The Three Kaves. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it will be about, but I want so desperately to at least me do too. a short run. Probably you're on. Something. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. that's too obvious. It'll be a bit, it has yeah. to be something totally random. Like it has to be like something about food or something, you know, yeah, like the history yeah. of cheese I, I want, Oh my goodness. I could go on for hours. So. <laughs> Green lit. Green. <laughs> so I have a question. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you before, but how do you guys know each other? Just the interwebs. Twitter. Oh, yeah, we okay. just met. I you think just found one... each other. If I remember correctly, there was one night during the lockdown, you know, in the million days that we were all trapped at home, because uh-huh. I Twitter was the where I spent a lot of my time. That's how I kept myself yeah. from going insane, but ironically making myself more insane. Mm. Uh, and I think yeah. I went on a rampage being like, I wonder how many Kavas are on Twitter that are like <laughs> cool that I know about. Yeah, so I yeah. went and added like all of them. Yeah. And uh, Kave here was funny and responded and he was very active on it. So we sort of became friends that way and then, uh, yeah. you know, grew from there. Same, same, cool. same, got a same story. Same story. Yeah. It's like it. You just there are so few Kaves out there. Uh-huh. It seems yeah. that once you start delving into it, and you're like, oh my god, there, there's more of us. We're there's everywhere. More. And it's we're a all, rare name. We're all sort of interested in, in music. It's sort of mm-hmm. an interesting thing. I can't figure that yeah. out. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because Persians in general like music. I don't know. But I think so. It, yeah, it sure felt that way online. I I always say that like the origin of our name. I think like kind of predisposes you to being like a bit of a of a person who will speak truth to power oh. and sort of it, it i think it really shapes how you see the world so it would make think, sense that you would also fall into the arts or music i don't think Sorry, our listeners totally. know the origin of your names <laughs> oh kave um, would you tell us the story of kave the black well, yeah i will tell you the story <laughs> would Go you for okay. all sit around the campfire children yes this is not a t- this is not a proper tab but we'll we'll consider this a mini tab at the beginning of our three mini tabs for this episode but briefly there was a king, his name is uh, Zahak, who, uh, sorry, let me back up real quick. So there's the Shahnameh, which is the Book of Kings, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to get me started. Hannah's laughing because she knows I'm going to go on for the yeah. next 45 yeah. minutes. Do it. This Let's yeah. do it. I, l- I love where this is going already. Let's just the change Shahnameh the entire is... trajectory <laughs> of this podcast. I don't care. I'm boiling hot. I would just love to listen <laughs> and not talk. <laughs> the Shahnameh is this very famous uh, book. That's about, you know, the Book of Kings. It's actually one long poem, technically. So it's about this king, and then his son takes over, and then there's this happens, and then this happens, and this happens. So it goes on forever and ever and ever. Uh, it's a very important cultural document for all Iranians. One of the stories within this, there is a king, his name is Zahak, who actually, uh, I guess, makes 
roughly makes a deal with like a demon or the devil and he ends up having these snakes that pop up on his shoulders and yeah. these snakes that on his that are on his shoulders only eat brains of children what and yeah literally this is not a joke <laughs> you know we had some dark fairy tales growing up dark. this is you thought yeah. brooms so, like, at it with persians we did it weird yeah, yeah. so he <laughs> i'm realizing uh, Basically, everybody in the kingdom hates him. And he's like, oh, no, why do people hate me for eating all their children's brains? And so <laughs> Kava, the blacksmith, is like this humble blacksmith. And he's like, dude, like, you suck. You want to kill my son. I'm not into it. He's like, bro, let me tell you this. How about this? How about I don't kill your son, but you sign this paper that says that I don't suck. And Kava is like, eat shit. I will not do that. Yes. And he gets really <laughs> angry. And then he leads a revolution. I can't remember what the son's name is. It's one. I I love how you're making it really apply to like the younger generation. (laughs) And then Kavi's like, "No, that's heck of sus. I'm going to overthrow you. Peasants' revolution, no no cap. cap. (laughs) (laughs) You're straight busting." I yeah. think Kava, Kava the Blacksmith was a true sigma. Is what they're saying now. Oh yeah, yeah. I know what that means. You see, an eleven-year-old, an eleven-year-old taught my daughter. Tell my daughter what that means, and she was like, "Mom, what's Sigma?" And I'm like, "I can't do oh, this no. yet." I'm yeah, I'm not ready. But real quick, just to finish up the story, the uh, the emblem that you've seen, Hannah, which I yeah, we have right here, which is part of my logo for mm-hmm. my business, mm-hmm. which is called Blacksmith Pictures. Um, that is the emblem that was on his blacksmith's apron. So what he does is he leads the revolution by taking his uh, apron, putting it on a stick holding it up in the air and hoisting it. And that becomes the flag and the symbol of revolution. Um, and they overthrow Zahak. I forget what his name is. That was the the estranged son of whoever. I don't, it wasn't Fairy Dune. I can't remember who it was. Somebody was no, living Fairy in Dune. like a... Was it Fairy yeah, Dune? Fairy Dune, right? The, the, the mythical yeah. guy who was up in the mountain. He has to go grab exactly. him, this like yeah. superhero character and bring yeah. it down to help overthrow. Yeah, it's a whole cool story. I mean, it's yeah, eventually awesome. I'm expecting you, Kabe, to make like a movie about it. I mean, at some point it has to happen. It's like, I will, yeah. Once okay. I get those okay. millions of dollars in funding that I've been known to get over and over again. Um... Any day now, <laughs> any day now. But It'll anyway, happen. yes, this is, this is the origin of our name. Uh, but the real reason you're here, Kava, is that you are, again, it does sound weird. It sounds like I'm talking to myself. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> and we what? pronounce our is names you... a little differently. That's the funny thing. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm hearing we, we, two different pronunciations. We we do a little. I mean, it's because we don't know any of the cave, so we have to make it up That's as true. we go along. So I say cave like agave. Yeah. You say you have cave, a little softer like, cava like well, aga- I, I, agava. I say it like agava. I think I always say cavacado is what I always tell mm. people in terms of mm-hmm. learning it. But it's more like cave as far as my experiences have been has been like when people who are non-Farsi speakers or non-Persian speakers are trying to say the name, but they can't say it, so they always say A. But technically, it's Kaveh. I feel like I'm Persian explaining today now. And I'm like, uh, it's yeah. actually Kaveh. <laughs> mm-hmm. But what's I don't worst, correct people when they say Kaveh. What's the worst mispronunciation you've ever got of your name? Oh, oh Kevin. Ke- you get Kevin a lot, both of you? No, no, I just remember that was the one I would get in school sometimes where like a teacher oh. on the first day of class and they'd start reading rule, which obviously it was always like they blaze through all the names and they'd get to my name and there'd be a long silence. And then it'd so be like, like oh, Kevin? Uh, I'm not even going to try and do this one. That's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh-huh. I actually went, I mean, like, I think at some point I came home like in maybe early elementary school and I got beat up because there was like some sort of like Chuck Norris movie came out where he yeah. like kills Iranians. And so, like, someone found All out my name. in the 80s, basically. Yeah. The... And my dad was like, you're going by Kevin now. So, actually, oh. I went by Kevin for a long time until, like, the end of high school. I was, like, trying to Whoa. get people to, like, call me by my real name. But they're like, no, dude, we've known you forever as Kevin. We're not. So, as soon as I went to college, I started using the name Kave again. But, like, oh, still, so if funny. I go to my hometown, like, someone will come up to me and be like, hey, Kevin. I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's me. Oh, I forgot. That's me. So, yeah, My... Kevin is like a very common one. Yeah, I yeah, haven't heard a... that name in 25 <laughs> yeah. years. That's so <laughs> funny. Actually, that yeah. tells you uh, the difference between the two of us is that that would happen to me and my parents were like, you will not back down from the heritage of your name. Absolutely <laughs> not. We will no, not my parents you will not change like, yourself to yeah. adapt you to bullies. Friends. Screw them. <laughs> yeah. No, my parents knew I couldn't fight. So they're like, oh, yeah, you, <laughs> oh this guy's not going to survive. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this kid's not going to survive unless we help him out here. So, um, okay. So, no. quick question before we get into it: Are you an open tab haver? Are you an open tab person? Are you a medical doctor in that you're clean and you don't do that? 
because you know, you're I, better than I us. I try not to. Most of my medical tabs are medically related things. And then there is a good portion of like movie things I go down and, you know, Wikipedia articles that I pull up. Um, I do like to keep things closed. I'm a little OCD in that way. Yeah. I like to close things down. Um, but in like, if you look at my inbox, for example, my email uh -huh. inbox, there is a lot of things that I just haven't closed down. They're like junk mail. I just leave open. So it oh, looks no. like I have like a billion emails. Like I know that stresses people out. You guys are um, opposite. Yeah, yeah, we are. So that, that is the opposite. So that's kind of how I work. Yeah. I keep my workspace clean, but yeah, otherwise it can be a mess. Oh, I'd like impressed. to picture you during uh, during surgery just being like, how do I make the incision? And like looking up that tab Where's before you Where's the small intestine? It. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, we, we do look, it is funny because sometimes we do have to look up things. I mean, we yeah. don't know every single thing. And sometimes there's like something you haven't seen in a long time. Uh -huh. Like if there's like something really rare, like you do look at, and but you want your doctor to do that. You want, don't want your doctor yeah. to pretend they know everything, right? Yeah. But it is like, I'll have to be like, that is interesting. Give me one second. I'm going to look it up. But I, I will say this. I do know where to look it up. Like, I don't like look right. up like medical issues on the Hindustan Facebook Times or Epoch Times right. or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I find like a good source. So, and, and I'll tell people, I'll be like, I have to look this up. Give me a moment. Or I'll like communicate with some expert in some other place that knows what they're talking about. But absolutely, I will look things up. I always had a hunch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you but, want your doctor doing that. You want I'm your glad. doctor. Doing, yeah, yeah. Look, I also look up th things constantly. I did see yeah. my doctor pull up Wikipedia once, and I was like, you know what? More power to her. Sh yeah, she'll look thing. up things know. while we're on the show. It's great. I'm not allowed to anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about looking up he, Wikipedia, though. That's my He can I mean. see me. He's like, don't look it up. And I'm like, how did you know? <laughs> he sees my hand. You, like Your hands are moving like this. Yeah, like, typing something I, I zone out, and I like, reach over here. Yeah, no. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, okay, so uh, you are, uh, as as our guest, and as this is a traditional Persian podcast, we let the guests go first. Because no, 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 you first. No, no, please, you first. <laughs> Sorry, Hannah, I'm so sorry. It's like, oh, no, we're going to be here all day. <laughs> no, it's funny because, like, yeah, it's the same. I'm the same way. I'm the same okay. way. You are. So you are We're Persian. culturally very similar. She's, Hannah, this is part of how we Hannah, bonded. Hannah. <laughs> Hannah June. Hannah June. Sort of Persian. Hannah June. That's almost my name. My middle name's Jane. So Jane. there you go. Oh, but a thing. Oh my gosh. Okay. I am ready to go. I do have something. All right. Good. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you got something. <laughs> I'm super excited to talk about this movie Bloodsport. No. Am, what? No. no. I'm just kidding. I'm just leg. kidding. I heard that you did an episode. You me out. I was like, no, 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 no. Start over. I can't do I, this. <laughs> I did hear that you had an episode on. But I am curious. What happens? Have you guys, because you guys didn't check with me beforehand. Like, what? Ha have you guys had a no. someone do the same thing? Mm -mm. No, it's never happened, actually. I mean, we're only about 20. This is 20, episode 26. So Yeah, it'll happen. It might. I, it might, it'll happen which at I some think point, yeah. might be kind of cool, actually, to yeah. hear like a it different perspective of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. But that's not what I did. Okay. Mine is based on something that was a little bit weirdly personal. I got a text message a couple weeks ago, and it kind of led me down a little bit of a wormhole. And okay. I'm excited to share this with you. Yeah. So I got a text from a number I didn't recognize, which is not uncommon. I have a new phone. I have lots of people whose numbers I just didn't save. And it said, because I live in San Francisco, I'm planning a hike on the GG Golden Great. Uh -huh. bridge do you still live in sf now i'm like i saw this i'm like 90 percent, 99 percent positive this is bullshit that this is some sort of scam <laughs> yeah. this is some you sort of hike con. the golden gate bridge no you don't right. even Famously go on flat. it <laughs> right just yeah. avoid it it's a bridge so it's, it's flat but i thought you know i do have people who are from other countries whose English is not that spectacular in my life. That's true. And it is possible they meant the Golden Gate Park. Oh, and yeah. so normally yeah. when I get these sorts of texts, I don't respond. But I was like, I'm a little curious. So I just text, sorry, who is this? Mm -hmm. The response I got back is, Lisa? Question mark. I'm Annie. We met while hiking the Hollywood sign last month and exchanged phone numbers. <laughs> 
<laughs> did you forget it? And I thought, okay, okay, oh, absolute no. bullshit at this point. Yeah, because first of all, if I'm not going to be hyped, they, I'm not doing the Hollywood sign. <laughs> like if they had said we met at Zenku's Chicken or something, I'd be like, <laughs> maybe that was me. Well, I'm strictly a Runyon, <laughs> a Runyon <laughs> person. I don't do the sign. So clearly, at this point, I think it's a spam, some sort of con. But I don't know. So I post it on Twitter, and I'm like, "What's the the scam here?" And people in multiple posts respond to me with a link to a Wikipedia site called Pig Butchering Scam. Have you guys heard what of the Pig no. Butchering Scam? I'm so excited. Okay, okay. this is this is not halal. No, this is no. this is not halal. <laughs> it is certainly not kosher. Uh-uh. And um, it, it, you're going to get into some weird stuff here. Okay. So, okay. My favorite. Hannah's so uh, excited. I'm, Essentially. I'm trying to contain myself. You said the word butchering and pig. I'm just excited. Yeah. I don't it's... love killing animals, but it's, it's fun to read about. Right. It is interesting. People are very upset by the name. I'm, I'm also yeah. like, you know, that is how we get bacon, right? Yeah. Like, it's how we get all of this. Bacon. Right. Is... So, essentially, it's a long con. It's a long term scam in which the victim is gradually over time fattened up, quote unquote, fattened up. And that means like they get, they grow comfortable with the person. You grow a connection with this person. Like and groomed almost? Groomed in a way. Yeah. But the point here is to get increasing contributions from the victim to this fraudulent cryptocurrency scheme. <laughs> of course, it has to be crypto, right? Always, of course. yeah. Um, so here, here's the basic rundown. The scammer initiates some sort of contact via online social media, like a dating app or uh, sending a wrong text message like, Harry, let's move our flight to five. And then you're like, who? I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. Or, hey, um, are, where are we meeting for lunch again? Or maybe they thank know a little. Thank you, chicken. Exactly. <laughs> now that would have Always absolutely chicken, worked yeah. on me. Excellent place to <laughs> like, go for I'm lunch. There. I'm already there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't I don't me. see you here. <laughs> so they might know a little bit about you. They might know a lot. It kind Ugh. of depends. So once the host... Or the scammer finds a suitable target, the proverbial pig. They stay in constant contact. They text every day. They Ugh. kind of know what you want to hear. They're really good at this. They they have guides and they have these algorithms. They have these things that tell them exactly what to say. They have like a a, a script that they can go off. But they're very good at this. And you're, what you're going to learn more about in this process is that it's a very elaborate scheme, and it's oh. not like a simple like guy sending out like. Nigerian prince scam. This is a little bit more right. elaborate than that. I hope the Nigerian prince is doing well, whatever he's up to now. I know he stopped looking for people I to hope help he's him thriving. get his money out. I hope he's I heard actually from him got in his a money while. out finally. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Self actualization, <laughs> therapy. You know, How is that, that guy? Um, so <laughs> here, here's what, here's, this is, uh, uh, the thing about this is that they'll get your trust and they'll get you to, they'll, get a lot of money from their victims and it's not necessarily too unique or original a scam but there is something to it that is very different and really is what has stepped this scam up and has made it a billion dollar and multiple oh. billions of dollars lost every year because of the scam it's because Scary. there is something where it really changes now most scams they get you to be like okay give me money and mm. i will invest it for you or I will take care of it for you. I will grow it. They play on people's either sympathy or mm-hmm. more likely they play on somebody's uh, greed. But the thing yeah. here that makes it different, it, it different is that they don't actually have you give them money. They say, I'm using this cryptocurrency app. I'm using this thing here and it's really making me a lot of money. You should also do it. Mm-hmm. I don't give it to me. Give it to this app. So they build these apps, these cryptocurrency apps. They will build an actual app. It looks really good. And mm-hmm. it looks like a very legitimate app. And they might even create like online reviews for the app. So if you double check it, it actually looks like it's wow. a real app. Now, even worse than that. <laughs> it's just an intermediary that they're just dumping the money into. It's like a paper tie. It's like a fake building, but a fake app. Yeah. And they, ma- they make the apps themselves and they run it themselves. This group, but I'll explain more about the people behind this. They could just but, make a regular app and like 
do a regular yeah. business. They're like, these well, scams guess- have been going really well. Right. Maybe we should leverage it into <laughs> actual crypto now and make yeah. money for everybody. <laughs> Maybe we should. Okay, we have web developers. Why can't we just like have them do something <laughs> You're real? You're there. Yeah, exactly. Almost- Here, here's the robbery. We get a job at the bank. Any yeah. job. Exactly. <laughs> And we and worked we there for worked 20 there. years. 20 to 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so what they'll actually do that's even worse is they'll get like a real app like MetaTrader, which is a real well-known yeah. like, cryptocurrency mm-hmm. app. But they'll build a plugin for the app, like a uh... tool that you download that therefore they can control and they can control all these numbers to it. So they get you to be like they'll, – they'll, they'll do something to be like, hey – I got to let you in on a secret. I'm a, my family owns this app or my family is really well known for cryptocurrency mm. and I like you a lot. And so I want you to make money too. You deserve to make money. You deserve to be doing more with your life. And so they I would people. never fall for that because I'm like, yeah, I don't exactly. deserve anything. You're <laughs> lying. Uh, if you knew me, you'd know I wouldn't respond to that because I know better. Exactly. <laughs> right. So the this is what they'll do. They'll they'll get the victim to to join. They'll simulate some trade so it actually looks like they're making money. Genius. And they encourage them to put more and more money in. So they're pretty much convinced that this is working. They're seeing that on the app that they're making money and they're getting fattened, so to speak. And then at some point, <laughs> the victim tries to withdraw their money and. They say, okay, well, there is this large tax you have to pay, and that's kind of a oh, weird thing because it's too course. high. And so they, this is essentially just one last fleecing because then you pay them like the whatever money because people are losing millions in this. And they'll Ooh. be like- in the, Millions? Of, millions? Millions. Like per person? Per person. Not oh everyone. I mean, this game could run for oh thousands and millions, but yeah, up to millions of, of dollars. And they'll be like, okay, well, you've you've earned a million dollars, but the tax is three hundred thousand dollars, which is crazy steep. But people are like, oh, well, I'm still making seven hundred thousand dollars, thirty percent. They pay that, and then they never get their money back. It's all gone. It's all gone. <laughs> it disappears into the ether because it's all on this blockchain. And who the hell knows what the hell the blockchain is all about? I mean, I certainly don't understand the blockchain. So then no. it's gone, and this is happening. All across the world, it's happening to people in the U.S. And the the FBI has sort of looked into this, and they've seen that at least two to three billion dollars of American money is lost this way. But you have to remember, this is an incredible underestimation because most people aren't even going to say when they've lost money. Yeah, they're, they're no, too embarrassed, embarrassed by it. I'd be too. Sh- I'd be too ashamed. Like that's yeah. boomer I, behavior. Right I, there. I was going to ask you too, to like, that. Kava, how much money have you invested so far? Yeah, it's only about three hundred thousand dollars. I'm not oh, rich. I'm a doctor. Still, I'm not like techie like make, the rest of these people. You're still going to make like a hundred thousand. I'm going to be that. the one to get it. it. It doesn't work. I have outsmarted these guys. I have a plan. Mm, you have I a plan. I have a plan. Nice. Um, you're no, going to get uh, but, a lot of people in your downline, and then they're yeah, going to definitely exactly. get more people in their downline. That's exactly right. Speaking <laughs> of which, you too. I have an offer yeah. for you that you it's actually are going why we're to here on the love. podcast. <laughs> Again, I'm from Utah. I'm immune to MLM pitches. I'm immune. <laughs> That's, right. That's all they oh, have. Well. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I see. Okay. They're all based there. And I know exactly Are what they one really? of my old- Oh, yeah. What one of my oh, old high school That's friends- That's tax laws, right? Well, it, yeah. And it is a whole reason. I, I can get it to some other time. But uh, when I, I always know when a friend is like, hey, Hannah, what's up? I'm like, no. Nope. Nope. We did not we go on a hike to you in the Hollywood Hills. High school theater, and I'm not talking to you now. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I'm very suspicious. I'm very. I don't suspicious. want your lip gloss that stays on all day. I can find my own. Oh, I'm what really mad at MLM. All day? Yeah, I don't. Um, I, it, thank goodness for that training. I'll never fall for an MLM. Well, but we'll uh, see. It, it's interesting because uh, it all takes place in Southeast Asia, which is sort of like the Utah of <laughs> Asia. Um, that's how I see it. It, mm, it, it kind of almost started. Almost exact. <laughs> it's, I mean, you think about it. If you think about it, a little bit. It, so, anyway, <laughs> it kind of started in China in around 2019, 2020, and oh, it's then fairly recent, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Then gone into Southeast Asia, where gangs in Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar run very corporate-like structures, huge. So, you know, it's interesting. You you, you might be wondering like why this all happened. It all kind of started, you know, at the height of the COVID pandemic. Because there was these huge gambling centers, these huge gambling towns. Like, uh, I have to read this because I'm going to get wrong. Sihonokville, Cambodia. I apologize to any Cambodian listeners. 
Mm. Um, so it was like a really, at one point, prosperous gambling town. But then people stopped gambling and going to casinos during COVID-19. Right. So casinos are not wants to lose money. They want to yeah. find a way to pivot. Gotta so pivot. they pivoted. <laughs> so these these became huge scam operation centers where <laughs> they they really increasingly use in like these integrated, sophisticated techniques, creation of fake online investment platforms. Lots of work goes into it. And and you know, people were really lonely at the time. People were yeah. looking for yeah. any sort of like connection to the world. We all and, did weird things in twenty twenty. I met another it's, Kave. I yeah. <laughs> tried, yeah, I tried to talk to the birds in my backyard. And that's what, what I did. That was my 2020. That's not a bad strategy. If they're crows, they, it's true. Absolutely they, they were worth crows it. and they yeah. did not want anything to do with me. So. It, is, Wait, it is so disheartening that people don't just rob people face to face anymore. Like, right. listen, the On internet's the ruined everything. Yeah. How, yeah. Just bring stab me in person. In yeah. <laughs> Millennials have ruined the robbing industry. <laughs> they have. I want to be on a horse and I want to be held at gunpoint and robbed by hiremen. Yeah. That's what, like the good old days. This used Look. to be a proper rap country. <laughs> I want to say one thing. I honestly believe there is a scam for everybody. Oh, yeah. I don't want any listeners of this thinking I look down upon people that are getting scammed by this big oh. butchering scam. Because there it's is true. a scam for everybody. Just like I feel like there is an Don't addiction for everybody. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if you're not addicted to something, you're just lucky enough that you haven't been exposed to it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but same thing goes for scams. Like I feel like there is a scam that will get everybody, no matter how savvy you are. And even the most internet savvy people have fallen for it. Um, I have a couple of examples here that I can go through. And this okay. is the this is kind of one of the biggest ones. There, in 2023, there was a tri-state bank in uh, Kansas, Elkhart, Kansas. Did you guys hear about this this bank by a chance in Elkhart, Kansas? Probably not. Mm-mm. No. It went under. Completely lost everything. Because the CEO, Shan Haynes, was embezzling money <laughs> up to $47 million from the bank to secure his his own funds because he had been pig butchered. He... Oh, that's the... You don't want that guy... I was going to say, how do you get people who have like a million, million, two million dollars to sink into this? That's crazy. Yeah. And also, I don't understand how banks work. How is that possible? That seems like yeah. it shouldn't happen, right? Like I don't one think guy, banks make sense. Yeah. It does It does show you how like ridiculous the banking system is that one oh guy God, yeah. could crush the whole bank. So anyways, <laughs> he, he's <laughs> been charged. Insane. He's how been charged in federal that? court. I don't know. That's the job to get. Well, it, uh. it, didn't, it didn't end well for him. So he was charged in federal court with embezzlement. Pled guilty in May. He his sentencing is scheduled for August eighth, and he has like a maximum of thirty years in prison, a wow. maximum fine of one million dollars, and he has to pay sixty something million dollars in restitution. Which I don't know how that happens, but he met someone on WhatsApp, and they. <laughs> that's and, there. You go. Yeah, clearly this is why this man is the head of the bank because uh-huh. that's there's nothing uh-huh. more credible than that. And so basically, he had to make eleven transfers from scammers. To, during this process. And this is like not a, a dumb guy. You you think he's a CEO of a bank. Like, no. anyways, my point is it could happen to you guys. It could happen to anyone. It could, it, Question. Yes. All of our head of bank listeners. What Sorry, would you, know what would, what would we fall for? What would we all fall for? I think I would fall for a scam that would be like, this is anti MLM. Come join our anti MLM MLM. I mm. think that's what I would fall for. That's a, yeah, that's pretty good. Like we're fighting MLM, donate yeah. to this thing. Yeah. Next thing I know, we've moved to an island, and I'm like referring mm. to them as like, you for, know, for me, it would, that's how they would get me to. It would be like yeah. some sort of like, um, there's children who are you know starving in this war torn part of the yeah. world, and um, they would show me a picture of it. Uh-huh. And <laughs> I like honestly, my kids know like every time we're watching TV and the commercial for Shriners Hospital shows uh-huh. up. I, I start tearing up when yeah. they show like the sick kids. And my kids oh. look at me and they just laugh. They're like, you're going to give them money now, aren't you? I'm like, yep. <laughs> yep. They get me every fucking oh. time. And they, they're like, they're, at some point, Shriners itself was like, hey, you you contribute a lot. Why don't you just yeah. do this monthly plan? I'm like, no, I know. I refuse to. They're there like, but you're is. pretty much paying more as it is right now, just so yeah. you know. And and you can get a free shirt. I'm like, no, stop. <laughs> I don't want a Shriners shirt. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe a hat. Every time. That's, that's how you would get me. 
I think, that, listen, for me, the honest answer is I don't mm-hmm. have any money to be scammed out of. So I, basically, I no one's ever going to get me for anything. <laughs> They pay you for mm. your time, man. They yeah, for, your time. yeah for, for my time. That's true. Somebody, some scammer will call me and say they're having a hard day, and then I'll be angry, yeah. but I will still talk to them for f- like an hour and a half as I try right. yeah, to talk to them. Yeah, that's the polite the thing to do. Yeah, it's exactly, because well, well, I'm too impolite to tell them yeah. to, to like go to hell. <laughs> well, you guys are both artists, though, is the thing. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like, I feel like people are scamming you constantly yeah. by like doing this. So, like, well, you know, you Always. do this art, and it's good for your like reputation. Exposure. And you get your exposure yeah. and credit, etc. IMDb credits for this role, which you're not well, going to exactly. get paid for. So, I feel like you guys are getting scammed. That's as part true. Of That's actually model. a good point. You're yeah. right. Kind of constantly, especially now AIs come around. Everyone's ever. Everyone's like, yeah, look, I made my own art, and it's like, mm, totally. No, that's not art. Listen, I, when I first started in the film industry, my thinking was you get a meal, you get a credit, and then you're not spending money that day. That was how I justified oh. it. So I was getting swindled for sure because yeah, right, it used to be like right. meals copy credit is when you first come in and you have no experience. People are like, we're not going to hire you. So you have to kind of eat shit and work for free. And I was like, all right, I'm not spending money on lunch. I'm not spending money on the day and I'm getting a credit. That was the only way I was able to justify yeah. it to myself. Whoa. Yeah. See, you poor bastards. Tell you, it's <laughs> yeah. for everybody. How do so, I become a doctor? <laughs> not, <laughs> it's too late for me. I would no, if I were Hannah, a doctor, I'd be immediately fired. What? No, what? Hannah, it's, it's not that hard. Look, if Please I can don't do tell it, me that. you can do it. Trust me, it's totally doable. It's Listen, I mean, you have, just Wikipedia. You have to put in a certain everything. amount of time. You have to put in a certain amount of time. That's I it. had like a solid 2.0 GPA. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> Diversity. We yeah. gotta, you don't they want need, every. <laughs> they need you, a. a uh, uh, a, like a ADHD college dropout to rip, you know, cut open somebody's mix it brain. up. Not yeah. all medicine is cutting <laughs> into people. Okay, why not? Why not? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're you right, could you're right. be a medical illustrator. How about that? My friend did that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, cartoons. Do you have <laughs> to go to med that. school for that? Yeah, <laughs> you have to you take a bunch of anatomy. To really? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Oh, that's so. Oh, no, no, you have to take like a ton of anatomy classes and like. Learn about a lot of, stuff. We, we took a lot of anatomy classes anyway. It's funny. Right. I have a I have a cousin who's an acupuncturist who like talks to me about anatomy. He's like, "How do you know all this shit?" And I'm like, "Because like, we I'm had to artist. study it for years. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, so much human anatomy when you have to learn how to draw every muscle and bone and how it contracts and expands and supinated and pronated and all that business." Did you work with I, cadavers or just like actual uh, live um, models? We had live I models have, and then we had yeah. skeletons. But that oh, was not art related. I think that was just a no. fun thing that For you were fun. doing on the side. I was yeah. I yeah. snuck in. They in the were bog. there was like literally no locks on the <laughs> doors, and I was like, I actually how far I can go. I went. Like, <laughs> you need to get out of the cemetery, lady. <laughs> You've been you arrested for this been four times to our already. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, um, I did go to a cadaver lab, and it was the first time I saw a human, like a human penis. <laughs> That's a different <laughs> story. Wait, hold on. The first the time you first saw time? Okay, this is before you were uh-huh. married, I assume. Oh, yeah. I was, like, young. <laughs> I was too young to be in a cadaver lab. Because I'm going to say, either there's something wrong here. Either you were far too young to be in a cadaver lab, yeah. or it uh, it took you a long time to, which is okay. There's no shame in that. Yeah. <laughs> no shame in that. No, but, no, no. It was the young part. I was okay. uh, 15. It was too young. <laughs> Probably a little too young. Probably a little too and, young. And I almost passed out because, you know, I can't even tell this story. I can't tell this story. This is, it's too much. Did you pass out if you tell the story? No, it just, they like lift it. <laughs> I can't tell. You'd be okay with it, but I, I can't. This guy went to med there. school. He knows. Yeah, he's seen yeah, dead yeah, bodies. Yeah, kind of gross. Oh, yeah, they, were like, they were like, yeah, check this out. They have lifted like the entire stomach up because it was just the torso. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they lifted it up and the penis <laughs> was attached and it was just like. Oh, like flopping like, is around. that how they normally work <laughs> no and i was like whoa and then i looked i looked down <laughs> yeah it's always how they look i looked down and saw all the like guts and fat and that's when i was like can't see anymore oh i'm falling Too over <laughs> yeah that's a lot that yeah boy, they didn't ease you into that experience no. that was then they handed me fun. they handed me half a human head anyway whoa. don't um half your which half. nightmares for the rest of your yeah. life her name was elaine uh oh, okay Elaine, uh, yeah. hello, Hannah. Remember me? Uh, is it just half, like an eyeball <laughs> falling out? Yeah, it's is it the Elaine. left half? Is it the top it half? Was, How was the head split? Her, it was like this. I held her right side of her head, and I was just like oh. passing oh. it along to the next kid because we were fifteen. <laughs> Did you hear her like in your nightmares? Be like. Come play with me, Hannah. Come play with me. <laughs> no, but it did really upset me. I could see and, why. Uh, I was yeah. the only one who was like, I didn't like this because no one else had the guts. 
<laughs> Good for you. Good. Well, they had anyway, those guts there on the table. They yeah. did. We all did hold a bunch of guts. I held a yeah, liver. They did have those guts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. All anyway, right. So, that, so I'm dude, so sorry. I, I, I'm a scam I artist. More, I have more pig butchering data yes. before yes. I close up here. Um, I looked up <laughs> just different stories about it. And I'll, some of these I'm going to read just from the articles I got them from. So okay. PJ Jenkins doesn't fit the profile of the average fraud victim. The 57 Not like other year girls. <laughs> the 57-year-old retired cop knew all about scams oh. when he matched with a woman called Alice on the dating app. So first of all, I'm like, okay, hold on. We're, we're, we're giving mm-hmm. cops a lot of credit here. A lot of credit. A lot of credit. <laughs> yeah. But soon Speaking after- Speaking of dropouts. Yeah. Soon after, Alice fleeced the Atlantic City man for $15,000. <gasps> it's the imperceptible way that pig butchering works. Even an experienced police officer can fall prey to this insidious long game. Which In that case, funny. pig butchering has a different uh, name, which I think is right. pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. Nice. Um, so- uh, Oh, here's a couple other examples. So, um, 52 year old woman named Sai, assuming that's not her real name, met a woman called Jessica. Sorry, 52 year old man named Sai met a woman uh, called Jessica online. He was already at a low point. Over a few months, the Bay Area man, it's one of our own, wow. built a relationship no. with Jessica, sharing news about his dying father and how he felt <laughs> oh, alone and sad. under pressure to support his <laughs> oh, no. But here's, here's oh, no. how it's so fucking evil because they play on those feelings. So yeah. Jessica weaponized his feelings, convincing him to invest in cryptocurrency to help his family. As oh, she no. ensnared Sai, he sank over a million dollars into her fabricated investment platform. Much a of that million? had been borrowed from his friends and family. Oh, no. Very true. So first of That's all, so painful. I can't. Be, I can't. Yeah. So be listeners, be very wary of anyone who love bombs. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys know what love bombing is. Oh when yeah, someone yeah. Showers yeah. all that affection, like that uh, Tinder swindler show on Netflix. Uh-huh. Try to watch that about the guy who pretended he was like the son of like a famed Russian Israeli diamond oligarch. Anyways, <laughs> love bombing. Be aware of love bombing. Be aware of anyone talking to you about cryptocurrency. I think oh, that's yeah. just a standard. Like. I mean that my butthole gets a little tight anytime someone starts talking about <laughs> cryptocurrency. <Same. laughs> um, I shut down. I was, was like, oh no, no. The, the be if you start texting someone new and they very quickly get into like big topics like ambitions, goals, uh, encouraging you to do more with your life, red flag. Uh, um, yeah. You you if they anyone online tries to get you to download a different app or something else or a, yeah. a plugin for an app that exists. Just no. run, run from it. Literally, um, just leave your and, house and run. <laughs> run away. <laughs> leave yeah. your phone at home. The, uh-huh. the last thing is this. Here's what makes this sort of a tough subject, because you want to hate and ridicule the scammers when they get to you. Mm-hmm. But the truth of it is, so I looked into this a little bit more, and my friend who is a uh, journalist in Myanmar, he works in Myanmar, and nice. uh, a guy named James Stout led me down this uh, to some to some new articles that I saw about this. The thing is, a lot of these people that are there in these factories and these, you know, these enterprises are really victims themselves. Oh, yeah. They're people who are yeah. stuck there. They're lured there with some false business promises. They've even yeah. gone through interviews. Oh. It seems totally legit. They get there. Their passports are taken. It's essentially yeah. human trafficking, like real human trafficking. I know Republicans Whoa. like to talk about human trafficking all the time, but this is like a yeah. real case of it. Yeah. So, like... And and there's thousands of people that are stuck there, and they're even at risk of like violence if they don't do what oh. they're supposed to do. So yeah. um, it's very hard. It's very hard. It's it's also tied into some of the mo- uh, a big part of the the finances and the economic system of these countries. Half of Cambodia's right. GDP is thought to be due to pig butchering scams. What? Whoa. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I don't know. It's it's hard to prove these things because there's no records, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right, but right. This they're a big part, and there's all these gray areas between like the illegal practices and the legal system, and oftentimes the police are being paid off for this process. So it is a very um, challenging situation. I don't know if there's yeah. a great answer to fix it, other than you know places like WhatsApp, Facebook, et cetera, they have to be more involved and more knowledgeable about what's happening and, and try to stay involved. But yeah, it's, um, it's, so that's pig butchering. That's the pig Whoa. butchering scam. Um, I almost got pig butchered. Um, oh. I, I didn't, I was lucky this time. 
But next time they may get me. They may get me. They, they might. Be, That's true. They, yeah, they're, they're like, we're from the Shriners like, Association or something. Yeah. Yeah. Get you to, Pick butcher they got a Shriner sure. app. Exactly. Uh-huh. They'll make one. It's so yeah. easy to do. <laughs> it really is very easy to make an app. You just yeah. get like five five good people to do it. Yeah. Like, and they like, have a whole like business oh, behind yeah. them. So. Anyways, that's the pig butchering app. I, I hope that helps people, uh, and I hope yeah. nobody here falls for any scam ever. But you probably. So will. did you just end up like just cut them off? You just didn't respond. Did you say like don't contact me? How did you end it? So my friend, who's more much more knowledgeable about Myanmar, the civil war, and all the strife there, uh, responded. He was like, "Why don't you say this? Chitthuis is a traitor to the people of Myanmar." <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> oh, what does but it I mean? Assume I assume it's a very deeply like <laughs> political thing that they would only get if they were there in Myanmar. Yeah. Um, and I did that because I'm a lunatic. Yeah. Uh, don't do that, people. Just delete and block the number. Um, I did that, and there was no response. So I think they, <laughs> they knew. They knew that I was. They knew that I was on to them. Oh, they knew that's that you so figured funny. it out. But there are people who do funny things. I, I have to say, even though I feel bad for the the people who are doing the scamming, I do love to see when people scam the scammer or respond yeah. with funny things. That's like the best. And you can go online fun. and you can see a bunch of funny things about like how people respond to that. There's wow. like all twi- like a bunch of Twitter accounts that are like, here's all these responses. Uh, yeah, it's, exactly. Uh, I almost fell for a scam. Um, I got a, a bit. They, they had mimicked a business tax um, form for my small business. And mm. I was like, oh, I thought I already paid business taxes. Okay, right. maybe I didn't because, you know, I don't remember anything ever. Yeah. Yeah. And so I open it up and I start, like, doing it. And then I was like, hold up. This doesn't feel right. And I'd, like, examined the letter. There was misspellings. Uh, it looked like it had been hell. scanned. It looked like it had been, like, blown up a little bit. It was it was immediately a scam. I was like, oh, yeah. scam. I'm so glad I know what pixels look like because now I can tell this is not a real <laughs> image. This Or this is not a real paper. It's just an image. Anyway, I have tracked it back, and there's this, this place in, like, Santa Ana that, like, they mm-hmm. put this, like, non-existent address as the return address for these things. Yeah. And, uh, and I found that, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay, good. I almost paid yeah. a lot of taxes to nobody. No, for sure. It, yeah. it, just this morning, I got this text here from someone saying that my fast track express lane um, oh. had an extra bill on it. <laughs> and it looks super legit. The The website that they want to send me to looks, like, legit. But, I mean, the phone that they send it to me is not attached in any way to our fast track, which is the little uh, pass that we use in the Bay Area oh, yeah. to go into, like, the fast, the, the carpool lane. So it's really, I mean, I don't know how we're going to, I don't know how. What oh, it's do. only going to get worse. It's, it's only, only going to get, get worse. I've decided that's how they're going to get me because I usually do have some sort of. Late fee. Late bridge <laughs> toll that I right. forgot. Yeah. That's how they, yeah, that's the one. That's the yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> well, Thank you so much. That was a fascinating. Yeah, thank you for the tab. Yeah, um, yeah, I and, uh, I learned a lot from it myself. Yeah. Yeah, same. Um, I like. I th- I did think it was going to be about pigs, but I'm glad well, it was not about real pigs dying and just about people yeah. getting ripped off. Yeah, yeah, it's better, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. what's better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anything's good. No, everything's <laughs> but, bad. Everything's yeah. bad. Everyone's upset. Every time we record this, we're like, how are you? Not great. We're not great. Nothing's no, great. Things are okay. awful. <laughs> what is that? I think with all what this, you... um, this uh, whatchamacallit, all this deep fake stuff and AI stuff, no. it's, just, it's just going to get so much worse. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just going to be pulling from what you already have and what you've already uh-huh. been exposed to. So it's like pulling from your own memory of something and then recreating something with it. That it's is so like, scary. It's, so, art, it's super scary. As artists, I'm sure you talk about this all the time, but. <laughs> I mean, AI, AI art as of now still is, doesn't seem to be that good to me, but how do you guys feel? Do you guys actually feel like there's a, do you guys feel like as artists, you have to learn how to use it or, uh, do you guys just say, no, you're going to hold off on incorporating it as long as you possibly can. Uh, do you want to go first or should I? I was like, this is probably like a 10 hour rant sorry, on my part. Sorry. We'll save it for I'll, my, I'll, my podcast. No, 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 I'll, 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 I'll I was I gonna say, Hannah, to... you can go. I'll try and be very concise, but you go ahead. I'm I'm so sick of it. I hate those stupid, <laughs> shiny, dumb little things. Little people, the little cats that have huge eyes, and they put them on all these products, and it's like no. hire real artists. But besides that, I do think there might be somewhere that it could no. work. So, like, let's say I need to draw a brick wall, and I don't want to draw a brick wall, <laughs> but I could generate a brick wall from my style, drawing from my own, like having yeah. it come from my own stuff. 
That's literally the only thing I can think of. What's up? What's up? Is like to help me finish a tedious, like a tedious picture. But yeah. Other yeah, than yeah. that, I don't know. It's hard because in the Bay Area, I I talk to people and they're like, "Well, what do you? What's wrong? Why Why don't you like it?" And it's like, it just all comes out as anger, and nobody takes me seriously because yeah. I'm so angry. <laughs> so there's it, mine. It is, it is terrible yeah. looking though, for the most part. It's awful. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Wow. Well, I mean, it's early. It's too, so right? ugly. Well, yeah. yeah. It is if ugly, I see another Pikachu with like six arms and big, huge Top. eyes, like advertising for some stupid online game, I'm going to kill something. Yeah, that's fair. A, sh- a pig. Oh, no I'll kill one, a pig. No a pig. Pig. Slaughter it. Yeah. Uh, I share the same level of rage and anger. Uh, <laughs> but again, more knowing calmly. this river. No, not at all. Uh, no. I'm more like, uh-uh. I will not open. Like, it will just be a flood that will take yeah, over. Much like keep, yeah, yeah. Keeping so Pandora's I'm, box shut. Uh, I'm like, yeah. I'm t- I'm torn between wanting to scream for the next hour and then also mm-hmm. feeling like I should make sure that this podcast continues at a reasonable rate where we actually get to talk <laughs> about everything. So Someone I, I'm going to let that supersede. However, me. I will say uh, angry, uh, also, not a Luddite, not against technology, mm-hmm. not convinced that the people creating technology in this way have mm-hmm. any interest in what they're trying to espouse. And I think that they're all just uh, flim flim men who are trying to yep. make themselves money. But they're where it's literally no different than like a snake oil salesman from the early mm-hmm. 1900s. So I think yeah. at the very least, the most positive way of looking at it on my mm-hmm. part is to say like, OK, you really are you interested in this? Get somebody who's. Uh, interested in knows this as doing. a technology and knows yeah. what they're doing yeah. and has a vested interest in it succeeding in a way that benefits you yeah. know, the humanity at large rather than just some asshole who's trying to get their stock price to go up. And AI, in a way, AI art is well, essentially theft. theft. That someone's yeah. copying someone's art. I see. Yeah. yeah. Pe- people okay. have found their signatures yeah. in other people's art. Yeah. Mm, I, I, more wow. specifically with theft, I think it's a licensing issue is more yeah. than what it is, more than anything else. But again... Uh, okay. We, sorry. We will... Sorry. I had to. No. 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 I, no. Ask. Don't apologize. Yeah. I, it's we a hot button issue for. I love yeah. talking about this. You bring a podcast on to it. your show. I'm going to ask you questions. I can't I, stop. I like I can't it. Stop. You're another podcast. Yeah. You're, you've asked a lot of questions. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, it's nice to have another Kava who asks questions. That's what we do, Hannah. That's what we do. That's how we uh-huh. roll. We podcast uh, and we ask questions. We I'm, ask. I'm seeing anyway, that now. <laughs> thank you for your tab. Well done. Thank you. Okay. So my tab. Uh, is a, an article from uh, it's bidwin.org and oh. the title of the article is Keeping Up with Khordadion The Life and Times of the King of Iranian Dance so whoa Kave I don't know yeah. I saved this one for when you were going to be on because I, I assumed you would have some familiarity with him uh, but none. It, am I none, none. So, and I feel like such a piece of shit now so sorry no no no, no <laughs> not at all uh, you, you, don't, you don't deserve that name. <laughs> uh, it's really funny. <laughs> I just did not expect I, that. Is what's what's so I, funny? Okay, don't tell me more. I wanted what's the name again? Khordadion. Well, no, Khordadion was know who his this name. Is. Yeah, Hannah might know. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll I'm going to be telling you both. This is actually yeah. this is exciting. This is a different kind of uh, story that I get to tell now. Um, okay, so. I guess now we need a little bit of context. So before we really get into this, but Mohammed Khordadion was this, like, he is the absolute OG of OG Persian memes. Like before the term meme, like even entered Mm -hmm. our collective lexicon, this is the guy. Um, Every single Persian person who lives stateside in the 80s, with the exception of Kava, it sounds like, um, has seen this (laughs) man. (laughs) I might might know who he is, but I don't know. You might know. by the way, your Farsi is so much better than mine. Holy <laughs> heck. I'm so, I feel like so, I, it's so good. I don't know. He gets the chiz and the chiz and the chiz better than me. <laughs> Hold so on. Before, before we get into this, I'm just going to send Kava a picture. So he let's see if he knows who, if he's seen this before I send it to Hannah. Sure. Do you recognize this man? Is it in, in the this chat? outfit? I'm just texting it to you. Yeah. Okay. This I'm might have up. you, you might understand who I'm talking about if you've seen this image before. Okay, uh, absolutely. Now I know okay. this. Okay. There you go. Yes. See, I was like, "There's no way you wouldn't have seen this guy before." Can I give a slight context here too, though? Go before ahead. Before we yeah. get into this guy, yeah, I am very much a Northern Californian Iranian. Yeah. And Northern Californian Iranians are very different in many ways from uh, Southern Californian Iranians. Now, it's true. Hila, Hane, if I can make it more Persian, <laughs> Hana yeah, June, go for it. Hana June. <laughs> You know, the, you. the thing about Persians is they will go to a place and then they will not only 
adapt to that place. They will take whatever it is that makes that place that place to an extreme. So if you put oh. a Persian guy in the Midwest, he's going to have a truck. He's going to have the blondest wife. <laughs> he's going to play on the football team and maybe the wrestling team. If you put him in Northern California, like myself, tech become crunchy, liberally, maybe yeah. tech. But th that's sort of like what happens there. And we're kind of separate from that. If you put them in L.A., they're going to be the most L.A. They're going to have the nicest <laughs> cars. They're going to dress yeah. really nice. Mm -hmm. They're going to get into the weirdest fashion of the time <laughs> and probably something to do with TV and or movies. That is kind of how it works. We just we go to whatever place and we just take it to the next level. <laughs> I love yeah. that. We're Which very extra. We do. So this guy is very extra. I've seen this meme. It is a very famous meme. I'll, I'll let uh, other Kave Major. I'll let Kave Major take over. Kave Major. I'm That's really Kave funny. Minor. Oh, um, it's very exciting that I'm. I see. I was like, "There's no way you wouldn't know this." I was yeah. like, It's, okay. it's yeah. impossible. I've seen um, the meme. Yes. I think. So, I, yeah. I think this sounds familiar to me too. This is. So maybe you've shown yeah. me. I might have shown it to you before. So basically, every single Persian person who lives stateside in the '80s has seen this man dancing. In his Foot Locker sales associate uniform on <laughs> <laughs> Jama Jam or whatever international channel they had in your town. And yeah. like, I cannot overstate this. That like, this man is, it's just burned and it's just seared into our collective <laughs> memories. And there's a reason for this. Uh, but first, a little backstory about the man, the myth, the legend of Muhammad Khordadian. So, Hannah, I'm just going to send you a quick clip of okay. um, the video um, so that you have a little context about what we're talking about. Okay. And we can maybe try and splice this into the YouTubes. And Kav, I sent it to you as well, yep. just so you can see it for all. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, remember I've this? Seen this? Who you did you? I think this. you might have shown this to I'm me. I'm probably the one who showed it yeah. to you at some point. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you showed me this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this guy's amazing. He is Look the at best. Him. Legend. Look how he comes walking out. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yep. that's Riz. That's yeah, exactly. Riz, Look at you know? it. <laughs> yeah, you know why you showed me this is because you. Why? I was surprised that there was such a huge dancing culture. Oh, oh, and, oh my and lord! And you were like, "All we do is dance." Have you that's, heard of that's this guy? Literally, all we, we do. Stop. Yeah, we can't stop with the dancing. It's a thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, I have to say this. This is, I'm watching the video now, and because mm -hmm. where him. I grew up, we didn't have a Persian channel. We just, it, it, there might've been one on satellite, but my parents didn't have it. So I never, I've actually never seen anything outside of the <laughs> meme. I'm actually watching oh, really? him dance. Yeah. Look so this is my him. first time watching oh. him dance. And bros can dance. He's, he's good. Moving. Yeah, he's. Those hips, man. What yeah, look the at those world? Hips. They don't lie. No. They do not lie. I'll just say dancing for Persian men is a big part of the culture. There's like certain. I love things. that. Like, I, I know, like, a lot of cultures of like, some men are like, oh, I don't want to dance, and it's not masculine. But Persian men, like, love to dance. It is. And if you don't dance, it's kind of considered a little bit questionable. Yeah. Really? I mean, at least not publicly, which is also part of, yeah. like, a big part of what the story is about. So <clears throat> let me give a little context, because, again, our listeners probably have no idea what we're talking about. No. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> His face. The looks he's giving. Yeah. So. Kay. In case you hadn't heard, back in uh, 1979, there was an Islamic revolution and the Shah of Iran was overthrown. Just a little one. Just a tiny yeah. one. Khomeini took his seat as the head of state, declaring himself the supreme leader, which I thought was a missed opportunity because he could have done it like Taco Bell and set, called himself yeah. leader supreme. But that's a story <laughs> for another day. Way better. Um, as you can imagine, this was a very dark and uncertain period in the country's history. And uh, at that time, Iranian television, meaning television in Iran, uh, used to only broadcast like revolutionary propaganda, essentially. They had taken over the uh. airwaves and were making sure that they were only pumping that out. Um, occasionally, they would play Nick at Night from like 9 to 11 and you'd watch repeats of... No, I'm joking. It's not real. <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, that's awesome. How did they do that? There was a brief moment where I was like, there could be some weird reason for that. Like, maybe yeah, no. Yeah. Like how well, like Soviet loved, Russia, love Lucy. Yeah. every <laughs> once in a while would like show right. a certain movie that was, yeah. anyway. So when the Iran-Iraq war broke out in 1981, and um, Hannah, your boy, Ronnie Reg was all getting hyped how? to sell Saddam chemical weapons. I can't even <laughs> handle that as a joke. How could you? <laughs> I don't 
famous for her love of Ronald Reagan. I, be- I believe in hell fan. simply because of him. Because yeah, if, the, if there's not one, then nothing makes sense. <laughs> so, he's, so anyway, go on. Sorry, uh, I should have just that laughed time, at that, but I can't. No, it's okay. It's meant to get you upset. Um, yeah, Iranian you love TV that. during that war just became filled with images of uh, Iranian soldiers who had gone to war and like death and like martyrs and shit. It's just they they Ugh. took it up like ten notches. It's basically just like everyone's Instagram feeds today, more or less, mm-hmm. as far as like insane stuff that you're just seeing. Yeah, but like the '80s uh, Iranian version of that, which is funny because. It's kind of like we've always had an algorithm that controls us no matter where we go or what we see. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. And right, um, yeah. shall we say it was not uh, uplifting? It was not very positive. Oh, man. <laughs> I remember being a kid and like being in my parents' library and they would have all these books like at war with humanity and like, uh, you know, it would be all these books like about the revolution and or about the Iran Iraq war and on the covers mm-hmm. just like dead bodies. Oh I remember my God. It, it was traumatic. There was like they didn't shy away from it. That's for no. sure. Like they and they there was a lot of martyrdom uh, yeah. during that time and there's a lot of people who did not want to forget it, which I you know, I, I can't I don't think that's the wrong thing. I don't know if that's the wrong thing, but it probably did shape us in a weird way <laughs> growing up. Yeah. That's very cultural too. I mean, they <laughs> oh, still I'm do sure. that essentially. They still yeah. are doing that with uh, with all the protests that have happened over the past couple of years, and even yeah. back in two thousand nine, yeah. it's always like people become murders very quickly, and those yeah. images of people who are bloody become very like embedded into the right public right. image. Um, but yeah. prior to the revolution, um, this was not so much the case. It wasn't at, like TV, meaning like it wasn't all death and destruction and martyrdom. It was like. You know, say what you will about the Shah's regime, but TV was just very different. There were shows and singing and dancing and, you know, not a bunch of future dead bodies declaring their love of the state. And uh, <laughs> because Dang, my Iran, favorite. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> a bunch of cadavers. Oh. And oh. <laughs> but because Iran seemed to be in a sort of fugue state during those years, all they got was horror. So, you know, depressed yet? Yeah. I already, yeah. yeah, of course. Okay, good. Yeah. That's the point. We yeah. were ahead of the game in Doom Scrolling. Yeah. That was kind of like our thing. That's true. Like, you know, that's news <laughs> was Doom Scrolling in Iran and <laughs> that's how we grew up. Wow. So oh. this is this is the context of the eighties. So enter Mohammad Khordadion, our boy. Okay. Khordadion grew up loving dance and pursued it or pursued it by any means necessary. He bluffed his way into the Ramsar youth camp, joining a folklore troupe, and eventually dancing at the prestigious the prestigious Rudaki Opera House. This is before the revolution. Yeah. Uh, and there he met an English ballerina named Jane uh, Baini, who was performing in a staging of Swan Lake for the Shah. Hmm. And Jane and Khordadion fell in love, sort of, because <laughs> uh, Khordadion is gay. And from I what I could say. I tell at the time, he was like, kind of but not really he was like out ish Mm -hmm. because you know even in pre-revolutionary iran it wasn't like very accepted and it wasn't like a super safe thing to do so he was kind of like well you know they really respected each other they both loved dance you know they got along certainly there was a there was a love of sorts in terms of like you know a kindred spirit kind of thing yeah um and she loves dancing so he's like let's do this shit and they got married and by the time he's around 24 years old is when the revolution begins. And like many people, they fled Iran. And the first place they go to is London. And they danced for a while. Apparently, there was a nightclub in Kensington that had like Iran oh. night or something or, else, something or other. And they danced there nice. for a little while. In Kensington? Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah go did, ahead. This, and this is probably something we don't have the answer to. And I'm not sure if it makes much of a difference. But did she know he was gay? And this was just like... A marriage of convenience like or was he not out at that time even to her i think uh from what i understand that from what i was reading uh it, it seemed like she didn't it wasn't like out out at that time when they got married but it was like uh it sort of came to reveal itself and uh actually by the time they get to los angeles which was the next uh, part of the story they do actually split by the time they get to the her. states hmm. but amicably like they're still very you know, on good terms. She yeah. actually ended up writing a book. It was like a memoir oh. about them. 
uh, wow. about her experiences with him, which I just found like last night when I was continuing to do the research. I kind of wish I had gotten a chance to thumb through it, but very good terms. She was very, the, the, there was no animosity, nothing bad. It wasn't like a crazy secret, but I think on some level she just sort of was like, you know, enamored by his his moves, so to speak, and yeah. his ability and his passion and his love for it. And yeah. so she was sort of like, um, fell into it. But I guess, you know, it, I don't think she married him outwardly knowing that he was gay, gay, but I think huh. maybe she had a sense. I'm not yeah. sure. I mean, if she's a dancer, like that is where even back like hundreds and hundreds of years ago, if you were gay, mm-hmm. that's where you needed to go, like theater or dance, because you could be out among those people pretty easily. So I would, I mean, maybe she did, or maybe she, maybe yeah. they were just like, best friends or something and she was like yeah, yeah. let's get married let's, i think that's, I, I, that's I like you a lot yeah, yeah i don't know yeah and it was it was the smart move for him to you know in yeah. terms of socially is to be like well it's probably better off to be married than to be an out gay man anyway definitely yeah. it's not, it's maybe she was a lesbian <laughs> yeah and his moves i mean like you, I don't if know. you if you see his dance moves like i'm watching on this video you sent like even the when persian men dance there is something that i really enjoy about it which is that it's not your typical masculine dancing, yeah. it does have a lot of feminine vibe mm-hmm. to it. It's kind yeah. of like masculine. And fem- what, I don't know how you define those terms, but it's not traditionally masculine, which is or, yeah. something I really dig about it. Or like how Western- That's what it's Western like, the Western view, view of masculine, masculine dancing. Yeah. yeah. It's not like break dancing, or I don't know what a masculine dance would be, but there are like feminine components to it, which is really something I yeah. love about the Persian dancing. And, and his is like particularly pronounced. So yeah. I can see why yeah. he was like, I have to protect myself yeah. and have this beard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, so like I said, and after the revolution, um, they go to London and then eventually he and his wife arrive in Los Angeles. And by the time they get there, like they split. And so Jordan is living in LA and he's looking to reinvent himself. This is the early eighties. And uh-huh. um, at that time, after the revolution, many Iranian artists who fled to the United States eventually kind of formed these little exile communities uh, of like, you know, these kind of diaspora pockets. You know, mm-hmm. we were talking about Northern California versus Southern California um, Iranians. So a large, I think the biggest collection of the diaspora uh, uh, in the States is in Los Angeles specifically. But I, I think the other one is probably San Jose, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I probably it's pretty high, but nothing beats Tarangulus, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tarangulus, exactly. So uh, the, the Westwood area, Tarangulus. So um, these these exiles start producing TV programs um, that came to Iran secretly on videotapes with a delay of several months. Because um, don't forget, like this is the era of VHS. So right. all these people right. who fled started making their own whatever. So it's almost like a black market. Um, like underground thing, which is still very much a scene in Iran today, but not yeah. for videotapes. It's for other stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And singers from before the Islamic Revolution who had fled sang on these VHS tapes and um, sort of continued their careers. And uh, and a few new faces appeared among them. And of course, we know who we're talking about. Uh-huh. Um, if you've seen <laughs> if you've seen any of the videos from this era, it's like super soft lighting it's like somebody just on a stage singing it kind of looks Warm. like half like a disco music video half like yeah. 80s There's sears like pillars like weirdly pillars portrait. in the background yeah. for no particular <laughs> reason it's, it's, it's always a very pillars persian thing like a persian thing with like to have pillars in the background it's very i don't know greek i don't know why we do that but it's something ancient greek sorry we don't want to get into that. That's the whole thing. We don't. No, no, I know. I know. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. <laughs> so I, I think this one's really fun. This is a Haida music video from, I'm assuming it was filmed in the 80s. Uh, Haida, who is a phenomenal singer, a, a very um, a very important um, figure in Iranian pop culture, uh, kind of took the classic folk singing and integrated it into like pop songs. Um, but this is like the know. kind of thing I always think of, of just like the hair and the makeup and like the lighting and the, if you watch this little clip that again, we'll show on the oh, screen. Yeah. <laughs> so oh yeah. Oh, that hair. Holy hell. It is so That Persian. hair. So Persian. <laughs> so 80s. It's super 80s. It's it's iconic. <laughs> but I love how she's looking at the camera like. It's yeah. very, just like hair is what we call it in Farsi. Like she's just like what does looking. That mean? And being, yeah. It's kind of like, I don't know how you explain hair in English. I don't know if there's a word for it. I, I don't either. I don't have the vocabulary. Like, I know Tarof. <laughs> Has she so, started singing yet? 
No. There's probably like a whole, like, well, there, it's a song, interlude. so there's like a whole musical interlude. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> I'd like her to start singing. <laughs> it's so great. It's like they shot this, like, at the Sears, where you go for your photos, uh, your exactly. family, awkward 80s family photos. It's like they turned it yeah. into a film studio. I, so I wanted to take a second. So this is this is sort of the crux of it, which I thought was interesting, because I had not thought about this since, like, I was a kid, and I've come to appreciate this more as an adult. And, you know, when you were little, you know, my mom would play this shit on TV and it yeah. would be like, oh, this is the worst. Like, why do we have to watch it? I hate all these yeah. music videos and they're terrible. And for some reason, it was like the only thing she would play it like full blast in the house. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just clinging uh, to like their culture and like yeah. being surrounded by like MTV and all this other stuff that was disregarding the Persian culture. I could. Yeah. They would cling to it so tight. Yeah. My family, yeah. We, they put it. Black Cats. You remember Black Cats? Yeah. It was like a Persian yeah, rock. <laughs> it was a Persian rock group. It was cool. So good. It's rough to hear. We should probably play oh. it. It's very cheesy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, okay. That kind of rock group. Yeah, yeah. They were I don't even know how to explain them. They're like a boy band, but looked like they were in their fifties, I think is what I remember them as. <laughs> Who didn't really reunite? Like a, it was just like yeah. they started a boy band in their fifties. It was but really still, strange. It is still like going. There's like black cats oh, yeah. now with some of the same members and some young people are brought in. I guess it's like Menudo a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of like Menudo. Both instruments. They play instruments. Yeah. And they would sing they in might English, have all been like thirty two at that time, but I don't know. It just they seemed yeah, dude, like they were in their fifties when I was a kid. Did not age like we do now. <laughs> thirty five year olds were rough. Oh okay. yeah, it's a very yeah. It, it doesn't hold up, but you know the thing about Persian music is, I, I mean, like these singers like Hayde and Gugush, these very famous pop singers. I just never got into Persian pop music. It was always like ten years behind American pop music, and I didn't yeah. even like American pop music. So to me, I just never like felt it. But like, there's such great Persian music out there. There's yeah. like the, the classical sitar stuff, like Hossein Ali Zadeh. Ooh. I'm yeah, like Ali super Zadeh's into it. It's beautiful. And and now you can actually find great rock groups in Iran who are trying to do different things like Radio Tehran, who are doing really interesting, fun stuff. It's all, you know, underground sort of stuff. Cool. But there is, and there's movies they made about it, like No One Knows About Black Cats or something like that is the name of the, or something like that. No One Knows About Persian Cats. And okay, yeah. there is there is a huge underground Persian music scene. That stuff is awesome. But it, it was never the stuff we heard on these things. I mean, I wish it no. was because I probably would have been much more into it. You know what I mean? As like a, a kid in the 80s, like this stuff was hard to like really get into the stuff yeah. our parents well, liked. You know, I, I think I think you you made an excellent point, And that, that was the next thing I was going to try and expand on, too. And I think you really hit the nail on the head, which is like. You know, I, now that I have a fully formed frontal lobe, it's like weirdly, <laughs> you know, I, I'm sympathetic and I'm, I have like a little bit more empathy. I'm like, it's actually kind of emotionally, like, it's a little bit sad when you think about it. It's very tragic. Yeah. It's like right. this country that you grew up in and loved has collapsed. There's all these like insane horror stories of how people had to escape. And you come to America who absolutely does not like you and not just because of like your sort of run of the mill racism, but also the hostage crisis that had just happened a couple yeah. of years ago. So yeah. it's like you're you got a target on your back. And on top of all of that, all you're seeing on the news is what's left of your homeland being destroyed by, oh. you know, this Iran Iraq war. And it's just yeah. like awful. And in some and so there is something kind of I, you know, I, I don't know that much about all the personalities that came to LA in that time, but there's something kind of great, I think, in terms of all these people being like, well, Shit! What are we gonna do? We're just gonna have to create our ways through, create our way through this, and they'll, we'll they'll record new songs, and they'll make new music. Like they're they're yeah. doing the best they could within the circumstances that were that they uh -huh. found themselves in, and and um, preserving what they what they lost right. in a way. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And to your point, like I, oh. it seemed like ten years behind, but that's probably the last time that they were like uh, yeah. emotionally stable and not experiencing. Yeah. Like, Oh, right, right. I don't know if any of us are ever emotionally stable, but seems but, things yeah. seem sta yeah. stable in a way where they could actually like relax. And, and now it's funny too, because like a Gugush song, Gugush Hannah was like this very famous. She was like our Lady yeah. Gaga, uh, yeah. Taylor Swift, Lady Gugush, like, <laughs> Lady Gugush. Yeah. Lady Gugush. I'm familiar like, with with her, yeah, yeah, because of yeah, Kaba, yeah, right. And so when I hear her come on, I'm always like. It's like nice now. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is like you nostalgic. appreciate it. I appreciate like, it. Yeah, yeah. And she actually, she is a very talented, she had a great voice. So she was. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so <clears throat> in this climate, Jordan decides to kind of go for it. Remember, he's in LA now. He's single. He's 
things are terrible everywhere else. And so he's just like, screw it. And uh, his first videotaped was called Persian Workout and Dance Lesson Number no. 1. And it was released in the early 80s by <laughs> Parse Video, which was a San Fernando Valley-based clearinghouse for Iranian music and film. And he wasn't really happy with the result. So in 1987, he released Persian Dance Number no. 2. And that becomes the one that's like iconic. Like this becomes the meme. And in it, so for people who are listening in it, he's wearing this like iconic <laughs> referee like tank top <laughs> yeah so and it's like exactly black what it leggings is. with like uh, what are the socks called the, the, um, the uh, tube socks leotard tubes, or... leotard well no i guess he's wearing the leotard with the leggings on top of it yeah uh ah. and he's kind of got this like short mm -hmm. jerry curl type hair um <laughs> yeah. and it, you know harry like a normal persian man like myself yeah well, i'm like but don't, uh, don't leave me out of this um yeah go ahead if, <laughs> if, if you if the listener I mean, in terms of the hairiness, yeah. I don't want you to... Just because you have a beard doesn't mean you're hairier than me. It just means you're <laughs> outwardly hairier than me, okay? Let's not, let's not make it a Should we have a contest right now? Shirts yeah, off yeah. party, yeah. Shirts let's, off now, come on. What kind of show do you want to make this? Yeah, um, right. So for listeners who would... You know, they want to know exactly what we're talking about. All you have to do is on your phone, if you have Twitter, is just put into the GIFs Persian, and he's like the first thing that pops up. Oh, is he the a first guy, one? <laughs> he's the, he's the first thing that pops up. Um, it's like him, the the Spanish guy who played Xerxes in 300. So it's like oh, those yeah. are like the first things that pop up. Um, and we can talk about 300 for uh, weeks. I could talk about yeah. that. But so he, he is, you will recognize him, I think. Uh, even people who are not Persian will probably recognize his pictures. You might have seen it. Yeah. So in this video, he's joined by a team of three women and two men who are also wearing crazy 80s workout gear. And he leads them in a lesson of classic Iranian dancing. And he'll say stuff like, my message is that dance is not just for perfect people and it's time to have a good time. And it's very Whoa. like- Good message, man, good message. I'm, I'm on board. Yeah. 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 It is time so, to have a good time. It it's is. time to have a good time. And yeah. so this is still kind of true today, but so, so Kava, you, you had touched upon this earlier, but it was at least in like popular culture in terms of like, uh, something like this, it was unheard of that a man was going to lead a dance class, particularly mm -hmm. in the 80s, particularly yeah. like as immigrants that came to this uh, country. And, you know, you have pe men who dance, like you said, certainly like in parties, but not necessarily like public figures who are dancers. That wasn't really yeah. a thing. I think there was a dancer from before. Her name was uh, Jamila was her stage name. She introduced belly dancing and all this stuff into like popular running culture. But there were no I dudes who did this. Um, so... Uh, he was, you know, Khordadion broke like this massive taboo for Iranian men by just being like, screw it. I'm going to be here. What what have I got to lose? I love dancing. And, yeah. He loves dancing. And your analog today in terms of looking back at it would probably be like Richard Simmons maybe. Uh -huh. But yeah. he says, uh, his quote is, I owe a lot to Jane Fonda. That's most of what he was modeling himself after because uh -huh. it had a very different vibe from from Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons was very much like, kind of self-help, like emotional, yeah. like letting it all out. This is more like, we're just here to have fun and like get in shape and, and have a good time. Um, yeah. And he was also one of the first people in Iranian culture to kind of take, I should say Iranian popular culture to take a cue from America. And he was, he was sort of assimilating in a way by taking that Jane Fonda template and then applying it to something that um, was from back home, which was this yeah. cultural dance. It's a cool, and, it's a really cool m m mashup of the two things because you can see equal amounts of both. It's like, oh, this is very yeah, 80s, yeah. but also like fully something I don't recognize as my from myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, oh, so you might, you might tell us, but I'm really fascinated yeah. to know what, what happened to him. Is he still around? Uh, yes, I, I, I will explain. Okay. I'll keep going. So suddenly he becomes like this um, darling of the Iranian diaspora. And his dance instruction videos could be found in every home as he taught Iranian dance steps to the post-revolutionary generation through secret videotapes. And these tapes made it back to Iran where it circulated on the country's black market once again. And so by Amazing. 1988, basically like every middle-class family in Iran also had a copy in addition to everybody that was in the States that saw it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Subversive. So cool. Yeah, exactly. So he kind of becomes like this weird, like they call him like maybe like a minister of happiness. Oh, and wow, what a great name! What a dope yeah. name <laughs> on a resume. So, yeah, 
Yeah. So like it's and again, it's the end of the Iran Iraq war. Uh, it's everyone's miserable. Shit sucks. <laughs> like the yeah. country's been overthrown, and then it got immediately into this like eight Way year worse. war. <laughs> Everyone yeah, hated everything. Worse, yeah. And people wanted to let loose after all that sadness. And suddenly there's this dude who's just like, hey, we're just here to have a good time and dance around and like, whatever, screw it. And it just, he, so it just sort of takes off. Yeah. And um, it, he also kind of reminds people of like, hey, this is the kind of shit we used to really love before all this terrible shit happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like an act of defiance. It's not even just dancing. It's like, a, I'm going to do yeah. this despite everything. It's punk rock. I it, absolutely yeah. love it. Absolutely. It really yeah. is. Yeah. It's like revolutionary. Yeah. It's cool. Uh, it, it, again, it's funny to me because like we just grew up kind of laughing at how like silly it was. And now I look at it and I'm yeah. like, oh, I guess it is like punk rockish. Like it, the yeah. balls it would take to do some shit like this. Yeah, yeah. You know? uh -huh. And so Kava, to your question, you're probably thinking, awesome. Everything turned out great for him, right? No, um, because I no, also understand this is, how the world works. Yeah, Because this is Iran. <laughs> that That's not how yeah, it works. Right. Yeah. Um, we're not allowed to experience joy. Uh, no, only no. sad. Yeah. We <laughs> so, get joy in small increments and we That's suck what the, the movies tell me at moments. least. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We have to be yeah. punished for experiencing tell me everyone's joy. really sad over there. This yeah. Is, yeah. I don't know if it's not so, true. <laughs> he, so he's like, things are fine. He's like kind of doing his thing in, in LA for a while. And then uh, I think around 2002, his mother passes away and, and she's still yeah. in Iran and he goes back. Um, wow. to sort of see family and deal with it all that as he's trying to leave i think it's like july of that year uh classic tale as old as time uh, that everyone always gets as soon as you're trying to leave Iran, that's when they come and they start questioning you and they're wow. like what's your deal what have you been doing here blah 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 blah. and then like he's a spy um, he's, he's gonna dance always. his way into espionage <laughs> and secrets <laughs> exactly Bulls. the guy who does the dancing class is clearly the person who's going to be the spy yeah um, they used to do that what was that one spy that uh, white was Mata, Wait, no, what was Mata it? Hari? Mata Hari, that spy oh, in know. World War II. She was a dancer and she was also a spy and like killed people. Anyway, different Oh, different oh that's tab. pretty cool. Yeah. I want to yeah. see that. There's a movie uh, with Mikhail Brishnikov who was like a spy and he danced. Oh, I remember. oh really? Yeah. Or he was that's like, they're cool. trying to get him out of the country. I don't know. The 80s were wild, man. I don't remember. Yeah. You know, it's all Very much so. Yeah. He was uh, arrested and convicted of, quote, promoting depravity and corruption among the youth through his oh. dance videotapes. From the 80s. Right. This yes. is 2002. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years Whoa. later. So he was initially given a 10-year prison sentence that was suspended pending good behavior, but he was barred for... So I, I'm unclear about this. It seems like they reversed it. I don't quite understand, but initially what it said was that he was barred for giving dance lessons from life, even outside of Iran and banned from oh. attending weddings and other public celebrations for three years. I don't uh. think that's still the case because I've seen videos of him doing stuff. So I don't, huh. what's funny is that even the Iranian government was like, okay, this will be really unpopular if we actually put him in Ban prison. Him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And they notoriously <laughs> don't care because they're, terrible people uh -huh. like yeah. they and the fact that even they were like mm, yeah it's not a good idea we should <laughs> we should just give him a strict warning because we're so the bridge too far that's why yeah yeah um that, uh, funny, putting it, it that it, way it, it's like yeah that's incredible that he didn't get yeah imprisoned yeah and and, and also on to your point it's interesting that like his homosexuality didn't come up in right. any kind of like sentencing which is something that right. they would have i think they're just sort of I, again i don't know like you said it's it's all speculation but they're probably just like this is too the, much of an important why? public because, figure yeah because you know the iranian government at the time who was who was president then it was ahmadinejad right he no was, i think yeah. 2002 was still khatami if i'm not mistaken i might I, be off i i feel like either way they were just going to be like, no, he, he can't be gay. He's a Persian man. He's not gay. Yeah. We don't have those here. We don't, we don't have those. Yeah. So that's probably why they didn't bring it up. They didn't want to acknowledge that one of our most famous, you know, exports could be gay. Yeah. Um, but eventually he was able to get out and now he splits his time. I think they said he lives in Turkey. So he he's kind of splits his time between Turkey and LA and he continues oh. to be like an, like an icon of the LGBTQ community outside of Iran. Yeah, so right on. He's a little bit older. He's not quite dancing, and you know he does like most of us. The muscles and the and the bones <laughs> don't quite work the same way that they used yeah. to. But you know they're still there. So he's still he's still kicking. 
That's hasn't rad. gone away quite yet. Yeah. I would love to see if he has like an event ever he ever does anything sort of locally in LA. I bet oh, you yeah. so pull a crowd. I, oh I th- yeah. Yeah, something will probably come up at some point. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. That's um, very cool. What a cool but yeah, guy. That's my tab. Yeah. Wow, that, that really, that's Thank really nice to see. Because I see him all the time. Yeah. I see yeah. him all the time in, in, in memes and gifs. So it's really nice to 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 have some context for him now. Yeah. 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 I love his outfit. That's a this Halloween costume right there. Well, I've, yeah. I've been saying this for a long time. I'm like, I keep telling Sarah. You got to do, do it. it. You should do uh, it. Because in you, LA, you could, it, yeah. people will recognize it. If I do people it might here, recognize, people, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're going to think I'm Look just out. like sort of an effeminate referee or something. <laughs> that, they won't know like what the outfit is. Referee of gay is. soccer. <laughs> yeah. They won't, they won't get it, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> you should though. I, you should You should dress up as him. You know, if if we're ever hanging out in Halloween together, I think I say we all go as in that <laughs> the outfit. whole crew, the whole crew. <laughs> I agree. I'd love to wear a five hundred open sl- tabs, a sleeveless crew. referee yeah, outfit. Exactly, would look great on me. Amazing. I, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's my so that's tab, Hannah. What do you got? Well, okay, that's awesome. Thank you. Mine is one that I uh, have started to almost do for multiple episodes, but mm-hmm. then okay. Have always just been like, no, I'll save it for a mini tab. Uh, and so now I'm finally doing it. And it is uh, something called the Tiffany problem. Oh. Have you heard of the Tiffany problem? I have not. Uh, I'm assuming yes. it's related to the Tiffany store. Yeah. I was going to say it's kind probably of. related to Donald Trump and not liking his daughter. But <laughs> he, he, he he's a problem. The Tiffany problem. And he's trying to eradicate her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. That was. <laughs> anyway, so it's called it's the Tiffany problem, and the phenomena known as the Tiffany problem is okay. when someone um, when history doesn't match our perception of reality. Huh. So typically in movies and entertainment, and they call it the Tiffany problem because Tiffany's the name Tiffany has been used since the year I think eleven hundred as a feminine name. It, it's like if you can't, so it's pretty much it's like you can't name a character Tiffany because it'll immediately pull people right out of the story that you're writing. And oh. Oh, uh. so, yeah, if you're reading like a, like a medieval night, like there's a medieval knight and he meets a chick named Tiffany, like a peasant named Tiffany. It's like, this isn't <laughs> <Yeah>. medieval. Immediately <laughs> it ruins it. It kind of like, and so this is just everything about it is <laughs> that, like, that, um, that's how I feel about Dune. Cause they're like, it's Paul, Paul and Jessica. I and literally wrote Jessica Tiffany. and Paul. <laughs> I, I wrote that as an example because I was, when I watched <laughs> Dune, I was like, Paul, <laughs> Paul, Paul, <laughs> Works. It's the Duncan Idaho works. It's I, the like, Duncan, Idaho. Duncan Idaho. Like, but again, that's that's kind of cool too. You know, it's like but, I and if like they do it weird. well, if right. they do it well, then you're like, oh, I'm back into the world. Which yeah. is like, I think Game of Thrones does it okay. Like these names, Ned. It's like yeah, Ned yeah. Flanders. Yeah, that's true. No, yeah, that's true. He's a benevolent ruler named Ned Stark. Yeah. And it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, it, but it's better. anyway, I mean, if they had done like Chad Lannister, yeah. that would have been cool. Chad Lannister. <laughs> Would have oh, been good yeah. Oh, we should rewrite it. Yeah, here we go. Shot Chad, shot. Be- Beverly. Bev- Bev. <laughs> Beverly Stark. Beverly Stark. Uh, yeah. Oh, Beverly Targaryen, for sure. That's a Beverly yeah. name, yeah. Tiffany Targaryen is good. Okay. Tiff. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, Tiffany Targaryen, Tiff, I love Tar- it. Tiff Targaryen. I'm going to do a little bit about the name Tiffany because it's actually pretty crazy. It's 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 originally okay. from a Greek name for um, Theophanes, which is... Uh, the word for like the Feast of Epiphany in Ooh, Catholicism, okay. I don't know what it is. Again, Catholic stuff I don't understand. And it started as that, and they started naming girls Theophany or Theof- the- Theophania, Theophania, they- or Theophania. So it was kind of like Tiffany, and then it made its way from Greece to a- to France, then to Britain as a last name. And the Tiffany's of Britain then moved to America and opened a jewelry store. And then it was made into a movie, and a few years later, the name just took off, and every girl in the eight seventies and eighties was named Tiffany. So hmm. that's where Tiffany comes from. It's an ancient name that we only associate with like eighties cheerleaders. And um, yeah, it's totally goodness. true. I don't see anything but a blonde no. cheerleader when you yeah. say the name Tiffany. It's so deeply embedded, which is yes. weird because the most famous Tiffany is. Well, actually, the Breakfast of Tiffany is, is her character Tiff. Not named. I never watched it or read the book. The uh, I don't know. Because it's played by that famous actress, right? Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. She was not yeah. a blonde cheerleader. No, yet. it's not Tiffany. Tiffany. When I hear the name Tiffany, name. that's the only why. Why was there actually? I don't know. 
was there ever a famous Tiffany character in an 80s movie that makes us think Tiffany is the name no, of an 80s I, blonde cheerleader? I just think that a lot of like white middle class American families in the 60s or 70s and 80s were like, let's name our blonde child Tiffany. And then yeah. it just like you just start associating it with that. Like all Sarah's play clarinet. Next time I meet a Tiffany, I'm going to call her <laughs> Theophanies. That's what I'm going to do. Call her Theophania. Theophania? Oh, hang on. Theophania. But uh, there Theophania was an empress. Probably male. Yeah. Yeah. There's an emperor. There was an empress Theophania, and she was like, nice. yeah. So this term was coined by <laughs> um, a science fiction and fantasy author, Joe Walton, in 2008. And she was in, doing an interview where she was like, uh, yeah, some things I just can't publish because no yeah. one would believe it. It's too bizarre to be fiction. Um, and she went on to say that Tiffany is a real attested medieval name and you cannot give it as a name to a character in a historical or fantasy setting because it looks too horribly modern. Mm-hmm. And so it's actually become a trope in like film and TV where it's like we can't that's it, that we have the Tiffany problem here. We can't. So, for example, denim. Denim was invented in 1500 and something in France mm-hmm. in a place called place called Nîmes, France. Nîmes. De Nîmes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. From Nîmes. And uh Denim was used by peasants for years, years, hundreds of years before it became like a associated with what we have today. But you can't put a peasant in denim yeah. in a movie. <laughs> right. like, could you yeah. imagine yeah. just like some peasant wearing denim? Like, no way. Yeah. So that's that right there is a Tiffany problem where it's like yeah. we have to change history in order Lord for people Levi, to believe. Here is imagine. your pig fat. <laughs> <laughs> I've slaughtered the pig for Lord Levi. Yeah, exactly. Um, to match our expectations. We have to change yeah. things to make them less right. realistic to match our expectations. But to yeah. match our expectations. And I was like blown away by this. And so I was like, well, I started thinking of some on my own. So here's the ones I thought of off the bat without looking anything up. Denim. All right. um, uh, the Middle Ages being gray and bleak. Uh, how there's always films. If it's in the Middle Ages, there's like a filter that's like, sad plague yeah. filter you like, know where it's like but, yeah. everyone's dreary it's like the Persian but in, filter is what we talk about yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. anytime like there's yellow. a Middle East there's like the scene opens with like someone you're right the the, Yod- the, the Middle East yodeling from and, the desert rising right. up yeah. yeah same with yeah like Middle Ages it's like gray everyone's gotta have dirty faces and teeth and it's like when in re- actuality they're relatively tidy like People would wash their face and hands every day. There was bright colors in their clothing. But if you have a peasant wearing pr- like bright red, you you associate that hot with like, someone rich. Can't have hot um, pink peasants. Well, that, hot yeah, pink yeah. denim jacket. That's another thing. <laughs> peasants. Some people would wear pink in like sixteen hundred, and it's like you can't oh, no put way. that in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah absolutely. You can't... I can see that being a problem. Yeah. 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 Huge it problem. Would take me out of it. Yeah. Immediately, and, and like like oh that uh, person's wearing pink. Oh. Um, Weirdly enough, a very accurate uh, movie for like language is the Mummy. Apparently, they like got in ancient Egypt like the the language spot on, a Coptic oh, Egypt Egyptian. Anyway, I have everything else about the movie was not. But anyway, yeah, so right. all the I other of... <laughs> casual racism that they yeah. threw into that movie, like you know, casting so white much. people as Egyptians, all that, you know. <laughs> or, yeah, we're very used to that. Oh, I'm, I'm I can imagine. Um, another one I thought of was guns and how when you shoot a gun, um, it's like mind mind numbingly loud. Like uh, I don't know yeah. if you've ever been near a gunshot, but it rings in your ears for like. Yeah, yeah you have to wear noise canceling headphones when you go to a gun range. You do, and yeah. You shoot, yeah. and they're very very loud. Very loud, yeah. and so in movies like all the spy movies, you're like, oh, we have this plot device called a silencer, right? Uh, that we stick on these guns, and those don't exist. They yeah. exist, but they barely do uh, anything. They just make oh, it really? so you don't lose your hearing. It's yeah, still it's extremely loud. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. But yeah. we can't have a spy movie where James Bond is like loudly shooting a gun over and over. So yeah. it's like, take us but right you, out of it. Yeah, you get hearing loss from that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, another one I thought of was, uh, yeah, Paul and Jessica from Dune, where it's like, yeah. that's not right. <laughs> Why'd you Mommy pick Jessica? Jess. Yeah. <laughs> And then also I thought of Roman and Greek statues used to be painted almost like uh, fluorescent colors. So, no right. way. I did not yeah. know that. Yes. Yeah. So all their buildings, like the ones we built, like the White House to look like, yeah. um, those are without the paint. So like back in the day, those buildings yeah. would be like fluorescent and bright colors and huge designs and patterns. and Just and gaudy. Gaudy. And Very Persian. Very Persian. A little bit yeah, ugly. Right. Persian, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, not... no, no, we have a lot of pillars what... again. Yeah, no, it's also very yeah. ugly in Persian yeah, culture. Yeah, we... <laughs> <laughs> there's parts of it that are not that pretty. Yeah, we can acknowledge there's some great stuff and yeah. some problematic aspects, sure. Yeah. But those Greek statues, the eyes, the pupils were painted on. Yeah. And they looked terrifying. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to send you one of those. So those are the ones that I thought of off the top of my head. And then okay. I was like, well, what else? Because there's got to be more. And I went down a Reddit hole. Because there's, there's not hole. a Wikipedia page that like Ugh. tells Ugh. me everything. And I don't, I'm not used to that. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I got to go out. To, I got to go find some more. And Reddit brought up that Braveheart is the perfect example. The movie Braveheart uh, right. is the perfect example of the Tiffany problem because we would not believe William Wallace if he were wearing like if he were wearing like the same uniform as the English because that's pretty uh, much what he did. They all wore similar uniform or uh, similar uh, armor uh, um and helmets and you couldn't see the faces and and uh, uh they didn't wear the blood blue paint. That was like ancient Picts or Druids or whatever. Uh, he would yeah. have just looked like a regular medieval dude, and that's not fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lot more like it looks a little bit more barbaric and fun. Yeah, and there's that contrast you have to have for TV. Yeah, I get it. Right, I like kilts didn't yeah. exist, but they're like we have to put these guys in kilts because uh, Scottish. Oh, yeah, they're Scottish. That's what they do. Yeah. Um, so there's like that. When stuff did kilts come like, along? Uh, you know, in the 1700s ish when they started. Oh, okay, so like a few hundred. How years do later. you know that? How do you know that? I wish I knew. <laughs> I That's wish amazing. I knew how I knew. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, but no, they they were actually from like one, like they always had the tartan pattern, you know, like the, with the, like the flannel the looking uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. A plaid. Uh, that was always kind of there, but then kilts themselves came from a specific region of Scotland, yeah. uh, the Highlands. And they were kind of unconquered by the British for a long time. And so they had their own mm. little thing. But like where William Wallace was, there weren't. Right. No right. kilts. Anyway. Yeah. Also, I found out there's kilts in Ireland and Wales. Doesn't matter. Okay. So, <laughs> um, Sounds in space. So mm-hmm. like, right, 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 right. There's You wouldn't hear anything. It would just be completely silent. But that would make the worst movie. Yeah. yeah. Or like Gravity or whatever it was. That was a fine yeah. movie. But they did a good job being quiet in space. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, if it's done right, it could be really eerie. You know? yeah. yeah, I was going to say. But, yeah. but like if you're firing like a uh, space laser and it's completely silent, it's like, yeah. oh. Boring. You got to add some really like boring. explosions or like fire. Yeah, you got to put a little oomph into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, where would we be without the pew pew? It's like pew pew yeah, pew. It's yeah. Part of our culture. You can't take that away from us. It's part Listen, of our they're culture. They're films. They're not docu. They're not. They're movies. They're blockbuster <laughs> yeah. movies. They're not Did documentaries. You, you guys saw that in this recent Star Wars TV show, The Acolyte. Like people oh. were losing their minds I've about the fact. It. So I, I only watched the first episode, but online people were losing their minds about. All the expected things you would think, like, oh, whoa, whoa, why is God, Disney's gone woke? They have like because people of, of color, woke. yeah, <laughs> in, um, space. in space, <laughs> in like Star <laughs> Wars. Star Wars is not about <laughs> the underdogs. <laughs> yeah, it's about, it's about white about, people in space. Yeah, okay, not about <laughs> politics. Um, but but the people were losing their minds over the fact that there was like a fire on a ship, and like in the beginning, like <laughs> yeah. someone's putting a fire out. They're like, there's no fires in space. I mean, of course, there's no Jedi's either in space. No. But like people uh, but were really like upset about it. They were, and you know what? I will say, I was. I used to be that kind of person when it came to like mid anything medieval. I was, oh. I'm, I'm in suffer. I was insufferable. Where it's like they wouldn't have that. They wouldn't say that word. Yeah. It's like just shut up yeah. and enjoy it. Like sometimes yeah. we just have to make it entertaining. And I learned yeah. that yeah. over time. Where it's like, as long as it feels historic, and as long as it represents that. Like I would say, like Braveheart represents Scottish people in a way that we all understand. Yeah. Um, mm, it still bothers me. Yeah, I could. I Never see mind. That. Yeah, I mean, be, I would love to to be able to watch something and walk away from it feeling like they, because I don't know that much about like Scottish Highland history and all that. I would yeah. love to be able to walk away knowing that the right work had been done and that like yeah. I learned actually learned something from the movie. Um, right. But I, I, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's a, I heard actually William Wallace was not such a nice guy. Someone Literally. tried to convince me of this. Yeah, and like, actually, he did a lot of torturing of yeah. the the people he, he captured and the quartering and all that stuff was stuff yeah. he did. And, and I'm like, I, I don't know. He was, a, I mean, they were being oppressed. So that's one of those things yeah. where it's like, right, right. If it, the oppressor is doing it versus the oppressed, it's, it, yeah. I don't know, it takes on a little bit of a different, Right, right, yeah. Tone. My sister was on a trip through Scotland, and 
she went to like the, the one of the battles, one of the big battles, yeah. and they had a statue of William Wallace. Oh, and yeah. And she was like, oh, my God, they did such a good job of finding an actor who looks like him. And the tour guy was like, <laughs> no, no. They, <laughs> they made they made I, it after the statue after of the Mel movie. Gibson. <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's a statue of Mel Gibson, essentially. Oh. Famously Australian, Hannah. Don't forget. That's Sorry right. To I'm still again. not okay with that. <laughs> with him being Australian? I just thought he was American this whole time. It <laughs> yeah. kind of like it well, kind he, of he, messed with me. He lived. This is a tab for some day, but he did le- live between the two, right? which is why his accent sort of like a little bit off. It's not quite American. It's not quite Australian. Yeah, I've just always categorized him as, I don't know. Other? Listen, just you're going to be on Twitter racist. complaining about the next Mel Gibson movie. Be like, he's not even Australian. There's no fire in space. It's like being all pissed about it. Australian Mel Gibson in space movie? Yeah, that, yeah. I'm looking forward to that new one. Um, so speaking of race, um, I was also going to say, what a weird lead Oh No, go on. I'm listening. <laughs> I was also going to say, the there's like movies where you see... Um, Africans and Middle Eastern people in European countries and people make a big fit about it. They're like, that doesn't make any sense. And it's like, bro, yes, it does. It was an open trade. Like it was like Who there were ships brought coming... England out of the dark ages. It was the right. Middle East. It was the trade routes. That's... It was it was You're welcome. You're yeah. welcome. It, it, it helped the economy of all these European countries to open up their trade to yeah the Middle East and Asia and so like there was definitely especially African there were African people living in England in the fifteen and sixteen hundreds uh. working at the palace working among the people like it would not be if the, if somebody was walking around town in London and they saw like an African person they'd be like oh interesting. Yeah, and right, you know, right. it, it was never anything like, ah! you know, they weren't like, but, this is woke. Yeah, it's like, woke. <laughs> but it's more like, oh, I wonder where he's coming in from, or oh, right, yeah, that's, yeah. You know, it was. Ne- Fun it, fact: it, there I, was also Europeans in the Middle East. Spoiler. Yeah, alert. Oh yeah, right, and yeah. A- and Africa, famous, uh, yeah. infamously. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Um, but yeah, exactly. Like there was um, there was a lot more cultural like crossovers than we think. Yeah. So there's all people get so upset about it. And it's like, ah, oh, you guys, come on. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, I don't the know. Tiffany problem. Very cool. The Tiffany problem. There's a couple Tiffany. more things. Yeah. This one last one I'm saving because I it was it's about Iran. And I there here's something that's interesting because you know, as we were t- saying, like the Middle Eastern filter where it's like mm-hmm. it's a desert and everyone's sad. And yeah. <laughs> and everyone's everyone is always, sad, but <laughs> everyone's sad everywhere. But yeah. for different reasons. It's a cultural yeah. sadness. Yeah. <laughs> but the food is it's really an, good. So it is really focus good. on that. <laughs> <laughs> food's not sad well no. yeah. i'm sure you probably already know this uh but they did have a very early form of air conditioning that worked mm-hmm. um so there was these things that they would uh that are still on buildings today in iran that are called um wind catchers and they would they they engineered them in this way this is like two thousand three thousand years ago yeah, yeah. They engineered them say, in i think this it's way. in persepolis is where they first popped yeah. up and it would pull wind that was coming in the, the cooler nights, pull it down into the houses below, and it would somehow, I don't know how I explained it, but I don't know how to do engineering. Um, but then it would push the hot air out at a completely different hole in the house and Crazy. just leave the cold cold air. And so all through the, like the hot summer days, the houses yeah. would stay cool and their yeah. water would stay cool. So they would mm-hmm. have these yeah. aqueducts and like underwater, like like the pipes, they would have these this whole system that it would cool the water, which would cool the floors, which would cool the house, which would also cool the people. So it was, it, and you don't, you know, you see like ancient Persia in like 300 and you're like, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, fun, well, fun representation. Yeah. You, you know, um, it's funny because like being Persian, you, you sort of learn all these little fun facts. Um, but the, the thing about the, um, what they used to call this is a yak chow which is still the Persian word, I think, for refrigerator. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my father. Oh, I didn't know. Garbage, that's what it's so. from? Okay. No, no, yeah. I thought oh, it was, yeah. cool. I didn't realize that was, it was literally called the Yachtron? But Yeah, but we learn, you learn all these little fun facts about like I what Iran and the Persian from. culture did. And honestly, we were written out of history so oh, yeah. much that like only now things are coming to light mm-hmm. that like I'm still learning about and like yeah. things that will blow your mind. Like Google... The origin of pizza. This is a very controversial oh, topic. Oh, you guys got pizza what? too, huh? 
Yes. Like the first one was from the Achaemenid Empire. It was soldiers out in the field. They would have like two like poles and they'd put like a shield on top of it and they would cook some bread with some yeah. like, <laughs> cheese and feta cheese and dates and stuff and that was like the first pizza look up the origin of noodles we used to think it would come from china it actually oh, turns no. out it probably went from the the persian empire to them or to the arabs and then to china so like all these little things my but my favorite of all like these fun little things is the origin of the high heels High heels were invented oh, by Iranians way back in the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that tracks. From what I've heard. <laughs> they actually came originally from Iranian horse soldiers. They were designed oh. to help the Iranian infantrymen and the people who would then get on the horse to like get into the stirrups and connect. They need to look stylish. That makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. That's and why so, like, cowboy boots before, have heels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They had to do and a catwalk to, like, before the, they actually were able to ride a horse first. Yes. And then they, they took them, they met like with Louis XIV in France. Oh, and, yeah. like he oh. saw this whole entourage. It's like, that looks cool. We're going to start wearing those. And they started having everyone wear them. And then it wasn't long before they were like, you know what? This is too hard for us. Only the women will yeah. wear them from now on. So that's, <laughs> but that's how it happened. That's Thanks. One of my, that's yeah. one of my favorite little things about, um, I don't know if it's I, Tiffany effect, but it's along the if same it, lines. If it were portrayed in a movie, then that would yeah. count as something that Listen, is a Tiffany effect. Every time so, I have a Persian in a movie from now on, they're going to be wearing six inch stilettos and eating yeah. pizza off of a shield that's, that's burning hot. Taking a pizza about. out of um, one of their yeah. refrigerators. So yeah. the yeah. refrigerators you were talking about were yeah. also super ancient and they were built in this like, in like a conical kind of. Uh, formation where it was able to keep the cool air. It, it, it was wild. Go read if you want to go read about like how it actually works. There's all this like science to it, but they could keep yeah. ice. I could, could keep ice um, unmelted throughout like the summer yeah. months. Very Whoa. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let me just That's... say, Hannah, thank you for uh, for giving us a shout out. We appreciate that. Yeah. What? Why do you look so? You're like Sorry. what? When people say thank you, sometimes I get defensive, yeah. and I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's awesome. True. I, I was attacking you. you. But no, I was saying thank you for giving us the oh, Persian yeah. shout out. That's very yeah, kind of you. I uh, the Persian inclusion. thought it was really interesting. Um, and there's there's tons of these. So, Oh, and it, one more thing. It's not just on TV. Here's another one that I thought was fascinating. is when Apple rolled out the shuffle feature on iPhone oh, mm-hmm. and iTunes. Um, yeah. They used a true random randomized formula and then everyone's like dude this isn't even actually that random like the same songs keep playing next to each other and Weird. you know and when really it was random but it didn't uh-huh. seem random right and so they reprogrammed it to feel more random when really That's it wasn't weird. wow they were just trying to like separate That's people's expectations so, cool. so right. it's not actually random it's just made to feel random because ra- truly whoa. random we could get like brand the same songs over and over you know yeah yeah you could by yeah. chance right. and so, so yeah that's cool. that's the tiffany effect and i uh I, if you, can you guys think of anything off the top of your head that you would think would be like something like that so much of the persian culture them. stuff yeah. that, that we that we talked about as depicted in hollywood yeah. you know we're not I mean? terrorists yeah. surprisingly yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <What? laughs> they're like all in order to uh soothe the western mind every persian person needs to be uh portrayed as a terrorist who wants to blow everything up <laughs> believe it or not that's not true <laughs> what it, it is hard it is it so is strange. hard for i think hollywood in general to know how to depict middle eastern people or persian yeah. people in film like, because we can run a pretty wide gambit in how we look. Like, you yeah, know, uh, yeah. you know, my my mom's side of the family it has like blue eyes and very Whoa. fair, and my brother uh, can is on sort of the other end of the spectrum. And even within our own family, we have that. So yeah. it's very hard for Hollywood to to do that. I mean, that's why they typically like they'll have a TV show, and it's not an Iranian actor playing an Iranian. They'll find like it an Indian actor because they're like this is oh. what people expect this is what <laughs> yeah. people expect us to look there like there it is yeah. yeah well man this has turned into the Iranian episode of this podcast I was gonna I say I, I was like I this is for sure gonna so sorry mostly be about it <laughs> I'm not no. even Persian which is the, the funny part what are you talking What's about <laughs> I'm not even that Persian which is like You're the funny even... part you know it's like but you put happens. two kaves together this is what happens yeah what are you gonna do Yep. Um, well, thank you for the Tiffany effect. That's wonderful. Um, and now we've come to our favorite part of the show, which is yeah. when we get to destroy our tabs. 
So <laughs> we need to figure out, Kaveh, do you have any suggestions of a fun sound effect that we can use to kill them? Do you have a curse splat? A good a solid splat. classic curse splat? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Cla guest yes. says classic curse splat. Let's do it. Kaveh, you want to lead the countdown from three? Okay. On three, two, one. Curse splat. Curse splat. Beautiful. Gone. Okay, so excellent. Wow. Yeah, there we go. They're gone. Moving along to listener emails. Uh, Hannah, I'm going to go first. Yep. So our first email is Julie from Ayrshire, Scotland. Funny enough. Hmm. Oh, I think it's yeah. Ayrshire, but it's whatever. Ayrshire, I, I'm sorry. Uh, Ayrshire, A-Y-R-S-H-I-R-E. I, I am, I -R -E. don't, look, we'll just edit the sound. Ayrshire. I'm probably wrong. Ayrshire or Ayrshire. I mean, I know it's not Ayrshire. <laughs> it's the Shire, okay? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> the Lord, this is from the Lord of the Rings. It's from the Shire, Scotland. <laughs> Hi, Hannah and Kava. <laughs> Your continued request me? for listeners to write in finally got to me. So here's my tab. <laughs> Bog bodies. <gasps> By <laughs> bodies. I know you oh, do. Oh, dude. Have you ever seen one in real life? In real life? No. Oh, a they're what? so... A bog body. body. You'll, you'll well, hear. I'll explain. You'll hear. Chris. They're cadavers who have fallen or been sacrificed into peat bogs and have been amazingly preserved. The oldest... Oh is circa 10,000 years old, and due to the cold anaerobic conditions, the bodies get kind of pickled. Have a look at a 2,500-year-old Tolan man's, uh, Tolan oh, man Tolan. from Denmark's face. Yeah, You can see his stubble. Internal organs are also preserved, which means archaeology can learn so much about diet, living conditions, and living conditions from these pickled people, which is a fun for it. Fun phrase. Uh, I'm going to send you the link real quick so everybody can see and know. What I think we're I already about. have that the tab open on Talon okay. Fan because he has a, a haircut, buddy. a very specific hairstyle. I think that I yeah, it's coming back. It's really fashionable. The little anyway. This is man. I love bog bodies. Okay. Oh, here, is that, is that the email? Uh, no. So it keeps going. Okay. Uh, bog butter has been found in oh. Ireland. <laughs> Yeah. I think they have also used as cold store for dairy products. Doesn't sound particularly palatable, mind you. Oh, but so, uh, although I come from part of the world where, uh, which has peat bogs, which is West Coast Scotland, don't worry. I'm not planning on any ritual human sacrifice. Oh. I've been reading about prehistoric Northern Europe, European culture ever since I found a load of worked stone tools on my local beach. No. Are you Please. They're currently with the treasure trove in Edinburgh being studied under Scots law. They belong to the crown. Old King Chuck owns all archaeological finds by oh. default in Scotland, even if it's private lands. Uh, keep up the good work. I'm enjoying listening and inevitably opening up more tabs than ever, ever before. I usually just wait until I have so many I get irritated by them and then just close everything <laughs> at once. Feels good. What a rush. Cheerio for now, Julie. Wow. wow. Thank you, Julie. Julie. Uh, so I went, so in Ireland it, at Dublin Trinity College, I think they have a bog body exhibit and mm. we went and looked at them because you could go in a room and go in a little area where they were and you could look like, I got like right up close to its face and it was one of the most wild experiences of my life because I was just like looking at this like 10, like 5,000 year old, really well preserved corpse. You mm. could see like the fingernails, you could see the hair. Anyway. Wow, that's amazing. I'm looking at the pictures right now, too. They are I, very well preserved. Very. You can see, like, what they ate. Like, I think the Tallinn man had, like, a belly full of berries and nuts or something random. Nice. I, and I mean this. I want to be buried in the bog. <laughs> I mean Mom. it. You say this every episode. I know. <laughs> I mean it. Like, I want someone to roll me down a hill in, in like, Ireland and just w let me sink into it. And then... 5,000 years from now, they're going to be like, this chick only ate Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's so well preserved. She, she's, she has, she's filled she's with preservatives. She's 90% sodium. <laughs> yeah. Ratu comes from TJ from Macomb County, Michigan. And uh, TJ says, hello, all. I am submitting a local story about an eccentric and well-liked local man, one who has lived in Macomb County most of his life. A man who seemed to have a lot of rumors, including people who claimed to have been, they have been to his house. In 2018, someone did break into his house and stated he would kill the local man. They instead hung out until the police showed up. My tab is about another incident. A, the time the Secret Service came to his door. Whoa. It's, M, it's Eminem. 
P- <laughs> P.S. Others confirmed his niece and I were in the same intro to Spanish class in high school. Thank Whoa. you, and stay Josie. So I looked at the article, and Eminem, the singer, the rapper, yeah, uh, yeah. wrote a song in the 2017 about killing Ivana, Ivanka Trump and putting her in his trunk. Oh. And uh, uh, okay. And then the Secret Service like raided his house. Of course they did. <laughs> yeah, I guess that makes sense. At least yeah. a knock on the door. You'd expect the knock on yeah. the door from that. I don't know if they raided, but they were probably like, you can't make that joke. Yeah. But... Uh, I just, I just love how I was like, oh, this is about a local, fun local story. No, it's Eminem. <laughs> what? I wonder though, was it the full like, was that what the song was about, or was there just like one just line verse. in a song? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I went and read the song, and I was like, oh yeah, that's not great, <laughs> but yeah. but it's Eminem. He always talks about murder. Yeah. Famously, women. <laughs> was about like yeah, his whole yeah. the reason he got famous was that was Stan, right? Yeah. It was all about like right. the guy Murray, that wanted to murder yeah. the guy. Really, if anything, yeah. the FBI probably showed up and they're like, "Listen, bro, that's old hat. You need a new trick. Yeah. You need to like, <laughs> right, right. come up can, with can some you do new something shit." Different? Yeah. Famously known you for see- helping artists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they love us. <laughs> Trying to push yeah. careers along, <laughs> right? Um, okay, I'm an uh, illustrator guys- for the FBI. Have- <laughs> that would be a fun job. Yeah. yeah. Um, if yeah. you guys have uh, an email that you'd like to share with us, please go ahead and send it to 500 opentabs at gmail.com. That's 500 opentabs. Give us a little bit of a blurb of what you learned. Include the link. And most importantly, tell us where you're from, especially if you're Eminem, so that uh, we can find yeah. out where we have friends. Um, yeah. I would like to, I guess we would like to thank Dr. Hoda for joining us on this episode. Mm-hmm. It was very wonderful to finally have you and to have another Kava on the show ask questions. Um, thank you for teaching us about um, what was it? Pig murder, uh, yeah, pig butchering, <laughs> tortoise slaughter. Known. What was it called? Tortoise <laughs> slaughter. The tortoise slaughter scam. But they're so delicious. Mm. <laughs> Turtle soup. Apparently, they're really Turtles. good. Um, Turtle soup. But no. Turtle. Th- thank you, Turtles. Thank you, Kava, for coming. Would you like to tell our audience about where they can find you? What you're up to? Anything that's coming up? Anything that they should know about? First of all, thank you both so much for having me on the show. This is super fun. This was like uh, this. It was such a, a joy to to not only talk to you in real life or sort of real life, uh, Kave, but also really nice to meet you too, Hannah. You um, too. And uh, if people don't have enough Kave in their ears, you <laughs> can, can never also, get enough. You can never get enough. You can listen to my podcast, The House of Pod. You can get it pretty much wherever you get your podcast. It's sort of a humor adjacent look at uh, public health and where it intersects with popular culture, um, the new cool. social equity. Um, and sometimes I'll cover just things that are not related, but I really want to talk about like the truth behind the the movie 300. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll go into topics like that sometimes too. So it, if you enjoy the show, there's a decent chance you'll also enjoy uh, yeah. mine. So, so give them both. Put them both on your 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 listen and be like, okay, it's my my kave time. This is this is uh, we're just gonna do a lot of kave today, and uh, yeah. and, and you, and you uh, get into you know, like some of the nitty gritty with it too. Like you talk about because like, you're a real you're an actual doctor, so this is this uh-huh. is these are facts coming from a person who actually knows mm. what he's talking about. Or I have someone who does. Come on, so yeah, yes, that's cool. that's, a, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. How you're do the I first get rid one of, of um, ours. Yeah, my IBS. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll bring you on. We'll do a whole show about it. Oh. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I mean, you'd be surprised, but that's like a lot of the questions I get. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very common question. It, and... it plagues me. Yeah. It's a, it's a problem. It's yeah. a problem. Don't let anyone tell you it's not. It is. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that was really yeah. weirdly and, uh... validating. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What the and where do they find you? Okay. Uh, on yeah, Twitter where can we or find you? Or so you can also find me on Twitter uh, at the house of pod. Um, and I'm on like Instagram and, uh, blue sky and all the uh, other socials, but I don't do that much on them. So if you, if you want to reach out to me or, or, or tag me in something, Twitter is probably the best place to find me. Cool. All right. And if you want to find, um, Kave, Kave one and I, uh, I'm at Hannah Hill. I'm on everything. And, um, I'm, I'm number two, Kave. I'm yeah. number two. I'm, I'm Kave Supreme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Kave Supreme. Supreme. <laughs> I'm That's getting right. Taco Bell after this. Yes. Uh, 500, o- at 500 Open Tabs is our handle. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter, sort of. Not really. I'm barely on Twitter anymore. Yeah. Um, my personal account is um, at Kava Taharian on Twitter that I barely check. But also at Permafriends on Instagram. Uh, at the time of this release, we are one week out from San Diego Comic Con. 
Uh, if you're going to be there, please come see us. Hannah and I are tabling next to each other in Artist Alley, BB01 and BB02. Additionally, mm -hmm. we will be hosting a panel, which by the time this comes out, we're going to have to announce it. It's uh, yeah. Escaping the Algorithm is the name of our panel. Mm -hmm. We have some awesome guests. Hannah, you want to tell them who's going to be on the panel? Yeah. So far, we have uh, uh, Lindsay Ellis, author and friend of the podcast. Um, we have... Holden McNeely of Page Seven and Razor to the Bruiser podcast, and let's see. Of course, my mind goes blank. Patrick right Balseros, the illustrator. Who's, oh, Patrick Balseros, yeah, yeah. Uh, great and we illustrator. Also have, uh, Daisy, Daisy Noemi, who helped from LA put um, Fest. LA Zine yeah. Fest together. It's going to be a really, really interesting conversation. I think we got uh -huh. some. We got people from like all walks of life. I think to and yeah, we're just uh, we're so talking cool. about how to build community outside of like algorithmic. Uh, sources so yeah because oh, we're all miserable and we hate being yep. on all the social media platforms yeah. and the way they control how isolated. we interact with each other yeah, yeah so we're all like yep. how do we actually do this using the internet but not in the way uh -huh. where it controls us we want to control it so, so yeah. uh as of right now that's going to be saturday at 1 p.m in room 28 de unless for some reason that's changed and we will update like i said last time i'm gonna be like blah, 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 so i could just slip the voice over on top of it but Perfect. saturday 28 DE, 1 PM at San Diego Comic-Con. Also come see us. Also look for our fans, which literally means fans Literal. that are hot because we're going to be doing a- It's hot um, in there. It's very hot in there, but we're also doing, <laughs> why do I always forget what it's called? I keep calling it a an Easter egg hunt. Scavenger hunt. Scavenger <laughs> hunt. Easter egg hunt. Nice. Also Persian. Easter, the painting eggs, is they did it first. Come I do the Persian Easter that. egg hunt. I didn't yeah. know that, but I believe yeah. it. That sounds then, right to me. Westerners were like, this is, this is cool. We're gonna this is paint a bizarre. Eggs, and we're like gonna make it, it about Jesus. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it throw a bunny in there. Yeah. Yeah. Rabbit rabbit. Uh anyway, that's uh that's pretty much it. Once again, yep. Kava, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank so you. lovely to finally get you thank on the you show. Guys. Thank you again thank for your you tab. Guys. Wonderful it was a delight. time. A delight. Hope to have you back again soon. And in the meantime, keep it Josie, everybody. Keep it Josie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing with our catchphrase. It makes no sense to anybody. <laughs> do it, but uh, do it. Yeah, keep it Josie. Okay. Bye. Bye. This Bye. is never the part I'm good at. Bye.